Welcome to Turmeric and Tequila with your host, Kristen Olson. Questioning a better way, one gracefully disruptive conversation at a time. to turmeric and tequila we have an annual special one for you we are doing our 2022 2023 year in review year in preview i have our annual pseudo co-host the ashley simone knight coming back esthetician project leader management running lives shaping our world doing the damn thing ashley welcome back Hello. Good to see you again. Long time no see. <laughs> I know we do. We have another podcast coming out um, where we break down Harry and Meghan and uh, that whole Netflix documentary and then some of our commentary on that. That's a good one. So if you're listening to either oh, one of these, check out the other. Um, <laughs> we'll talk. That was on my list for 2022, the breakdown, but we'll we'll make it brief because we are they got a whole podcast. So yeah, um, totally fine. Ashley, how are you doing? What do you want our people, if they just listened to our last episode, um, what's maybe like one statement that 2023 Ashley is like, what's the vibes we're bringing to the table, even though we're going to get into it, give us like a 10,000 foot view. That's so funny that, that I feel like this is the first year that we've done this where I'm like, I don't know. And of course we'll get into it, but yeah. I feel like the past couple of years, I've like kind of just like been grinding it out mm -hmm. and I've achieved a lot of things. And now I'm like, okay, like, where do I want to go now? Yeah, <laughs> I actually, I completely agree with that. Cause I, I mean, we're pretty intentional in general and we've also been very busy. I think that is a key piece of the puzzle. Yes. Oh my gosh. Um, but I do think this, and I've been talking to like my other like leaders, uh, I think a lot of work, like the has, ground has been laid in 2023. I just get these general vibes that like now it's time to do like walk down the path, step into mm. it, whatever it is. I think just in general, I've been getting these vibes of like, man, I've just been doing so much work. I've been doing, doing, doing. And I feel like this is the year. And like, I couldn't resonate with that more. Um, yeah. I kind of hope I think I say that every year, but I really do feel like this is that year. So I think it's fitting and serendipitous that we're kind of on the same page there where it's even if I'm intentional, I sit like, I don't know, but like, that's kind of okay. Cause I'm ready for yes. it. Yes. I, yes. Full okay. wholeheartedly agree on that statement and Eight. sentiments. <laughs> okay. So we'll jump right in. We usually do a quick uh, chronological breakdown of events. We'll cover those. Ashley and I's take on big things that happened in 2022. And then we will get into um, our 2022 review and our 2023 um preview so it's we're, we're breaking down the same sheet i released last year so if you want to do it with us i'll encourage it every year it's the yes. exact same one it's some quick i statements and some goals that you can put down and also a little bit of reflection so i will say it was pretty cool to look at the old ones and i really didn't even think to do that i just happened to save them both on the same file so it was cool uh -huh. for me to sit there and reflect and be like oh you know what oh i actually did more than i thought or this was good so if you if we have like you know a running track record of maybe like six seven of these as time goes on i think it might be cool to see where we ebb and flow as humans hopefully we're on a continuous rise but there might be a dip um we'll see <laughs> but not like too deep of a dip not too deep well that's when you call your friends and you're like yo get out of the low zone let's go right 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 well we wouldn't yeah. even let you get that low anyway yeah exactly <laughs> pass the tequila you know what's up um okay let's start with world events i'm gonna let you kick off um and let me know because I feel like <laughs> we're gonna have some energy around a few things and I always appreciate that so come oh at it God. oh mm. what topped think... your list of world events oh my yeah. god I, wait before you said I, I did actually specifically separate my world events and my pop culture events I know I'm like I, I want to prioritize pop culture <laughs> ones right now that's so <laughs> funny what okay no I'm gonna have to bounce off of you because okay. I feel like this year was like a blur for me and I for agree. we'll get into but yes <laughs> well, well, I did too. I sat down and I was like uh this year and I'm like what did I do what yesterday even happened? I, yeah, I don't even oh. like literally I'm like what did we do for Christmas I don't even know and it wasn't even the tequila or the busyness <laughs> it was just like the world's moving and I'm spinning with it so I don't know um look for your nearest mirror ball that's spinning with lights on it and I'm probably under it <laughs> figuring it out <laughs> uh, honestly <laughs> It is like if you can get the visual, that's literally Chris Olson's heaven. Like, we're just is. here. 
you. Yeah. <laughs> um, I do have two mirror balls in my house. Let it be known. But when I looked, when I looked up, there was thing that popped to my mind. It was all things about Ukraine. Um, number one, Russia yeah. invading Ukraine. I like them. Those two things in that conversation specifically. And I just think we are um, continuously having this conversation of like the bully and then the bully doing what they want. And that's certainly a conversation yeah. in America and probably in households and businesses. Um, it, I, but I also think to Ukraine's credit and uh, Voldemort Zelensky's <clears throat> passion and commitment to his country have really set the tone of how you kind of take down the bullies and yeah. stand up in the midst of it. So uh, that was probably the most notable world event, in my opinion. What did you think about yeah. that? No, I agree. I do think that was, I mean, it's been so, it's been going on for so long that I'm like, yeah. oh man, I guess that was this year. Yeah. Um, I think for me, it was like, oh shoot. Like, I mean, not to be like myopic, but I was like, I am so not in the mood for like World War Three. Like oh. I was scared. I'm not going to lie. So. Well, COVID and like some other stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I do think it's hard and not that we need empathy in this, <clears throat> but it's hard to have genuine emotion around something you can control so little about. Like, it's kind of like, okay, well, what can we do? And like, there was great fundraisers. We actually had a podcast around yeah. some things, but it's really hard to be a contributor. You just got to kind of go back to your own world of like, what can I, what positive vibes can I do? How can I show up to make this a little bit better? And I don't know, that was, it, it's a hard, and just to see the destruction and like, um, I, I did get a couple facts, but um, it said uh, we, the U.S. just proclaimed 45 billion um to things moving forward this was like a few days ago and uh Voldemort Zelensky addressed Congress on Wednesday night urging for support of our country and that's when we we put in the 45 billion um mm -hmm. but it sounds like other countries around the world are really stepping up and even though it's kind of like we're getting like it is going on and on and on it sounds like we're still involved so I'm glad to see that it's yeah. I just don't know how we can't get rid of one person I'm going to just put that out there yeah. And I don't know. I always get a little concerned. I mean, of course, like I know we're part of like, you know, we're part of something bigger than ourselves and we have to support each other. I get it. But I also worry of like, okay, well, what's going on here? Like, yeah. do we like, do we have enough of what we need to have over here? Like that yeah. always concerns me too. Like, you know, like during COVID, I remember stories of like schools, like doing drives for kids who couldn't like eat lunch or dinner or whatever like if lunch and breakfast were their only meal like what where what are we sending money out for like what are we doing yeah. so I'm not yeah. saying that it's right or wrong it's just it just gets my mind turning yeah I, well, I mean I think number one there's just so much we don't know and like we probably right. never will and that's always just a piece of the puzzle I do think uh just having you know military family I know that if we let one leader completely run and do whatever they want and not assist. Like, you know, where it's going to be coming next and you know where, yeah. where it's coming. So I just, I don't know. I think it's really heavy conversations, but I'm just glad that I think a lot of the world is like us on a very simple level where we want to help. We want to do what we can because yes. it is awful and it's heartbreaking. And you see a lot, just innocent people being displaced for straight up. No good reason. I just can't believe it's a thing in 2022, now 2023, right, like, why but this can still happen. It kind of blows my mind. Can we just not? I know. Well, I couldn't not... be president. Like I'd be like, let's sit down and hug. Let's hug I out. Y'all figure it well, out. Well, <laughs> I might, I might bring a bodyguard to have some physical uh, <laughs> communication happen. Because... Physical communication. Yeah. I'm like, okay. <laughs> you could even use that. Uh, Cause sometimes like, I don't know that you're going to break through to world leaders that are X amount of years old doing things they've way they've wanted for so many long. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. No, um, I, I don't think you're wrong, but let's, <laughs> let's just never be in those rooms. How about that? <laughs> On that I, note, I'm totally fine with that. An another thing we want to forget, and I'm glad to see it January 6th finally concludes all the, the, um, conversation it says a year full here of hearings and subpoenas is culminating on the Jan january 6th select committee final report due out thursday i think this was last thursday it's a investigation into the capitol riot on january 6 2021 comes to an end with the committee making criminal referrals against trump recommending mm -hmm. an ethics injury ethics inquiry yeah i still have injury on the brain um <laughs> physical communication into several republican lawmakers and recommending legislation to prevent another similar event right below that Trump 2024 announcement on November oh 15th. God. Trump announced his third White House bid for, um, from Mar-a-Lago. 
In recent uh, in months, several Republicans have hinted at their own 2024 presidential bids or have been discussed as possible contenders, including Ron DeSantis, former Vice President Mike Pence, former Secretary Mark Pompeo, Arkansas Gov, Asa Hutchinson. And I, that's all I'm going to say on it. Yeah. Your commentary, we just want to put it out there, address it, and then we'll let it be. But what do you got? What are your thoughts? Um, OK, that was my favorite piece of like current events. Um, <laughs> I I was I don't know if. I think a lot of people watched it, but I know I watched it. I stayed okay. up to date. I was listening to all of their discovery. Like it was juicy. Yeah. It was, it was so <laughs> great. <laughs> it really was. It was almost salacious, but it was real. Yeah. Like, but that's the, that's what made it so great. You're, yeah. you're like, this is so ridiculous, but yeah. it's actually real. This is really happening. This yeah. man really did these things and everybody that was in his camp truly turned against him and was like yeah no i'm not trying to go to jail so well also you're have your oath to god you're supposed to tell the truth so like mm -hmm. whatever well, you wanted to go to jail or not the same man we're talking about holds the bible upside down so well, true <laughs> not him every everybody else was in the court of law doing their thing so like even if they didn't want to go against him you had to say what the truth was i only mm -hmm. saw chunks of it um because I could only handle so much and it was it was getting redundant and yeah, it was yeah. just it was so like okay I've seen it I already I I, I know I agree like we, I don't even feel like I did see all watched this. it yeah, yeah yeah and I did watch that whole thing but anyways I was glad to see we'll see how this shakes out how do you feel about these other because now there's like him and DeSantis going at it blah 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 how do you feel like these other guys coming up they're now are like peace you know whatever because i think trump has the lowest approval rating he's ever had forget about republican and democrat i yeah. think as a human people are starting to be like okay um i think it's <laughs> so i will say i think it, i think it's a good thing um yeah. i think you know like the republican party is starting to cannibalize itself and it is what it is i mean <laughs> I'm really trying to, but I, the reason why I'm pausing is because I'm trying not to come off super leftist, Yeah. but like, you know, the Republican party has been known to like prey upon people's like, you know, values, but they're not really helping people. These same people that they claim like, oh yeah, like, you know, you work at a steel mill or you work, you like mine coal or whatever the hell they say they're supposed to help you. They do nothing to help these people. All they do yeah. is prey upon your fears of like gay marriage, which is ridiculous not even gonna go there <laughs> and then you know most of all like abortion they just want something that like here's what we believe in and here's our values like no you guys don't believe in any of that have you met trump like yeah. they, he doesn't you don't really believe in the bible like what are we doing here you just want power yeah you're you not doing anything for the people that support you so until like they truly cannibalize themselves and come back again and get it together like i think this is a good thing I kind of agree. I think well, on both sides, like this extremist thing. And that's why I really think it's got, I mean, we will have certain conversations around Re Republican and Democrat. That's not going to go away. But I think right. just like the good human level, I think it's um, 85% of people under 20. Thank you for joining Turmeric and Tequila with your host, Kristen Olson. Like Tune in next time. And don't and forget to again, subscribe on Apple, like Google Podcasts, Podcasts Spotify, Freedom or wherever you listen. And on both sides, it seems to be go, but that's not going to I, I don't know. I was just glad to see more of the open mindedness. I do think it's more of like a strict here's how it is in on the right. And mm -hmm. left is a little sometimes a little too loose. But I don't mm -hmm. think I see our young people going in a direction where they're seeking more lockdown. They're seeking more well, live with fear. Percent. So I think that, like you're saying, it's just gonna naturally kind of flutter out and <laughs> think yeah, I'm sorry. It will it will write itself. And yeah. I'm glad like not like I'm not looking for people to suffer, people to hurt or whatever. That's not my message, but my message is like in order for you to write the ship, you got to yeah. root out the weeds. Mm, so I think they're kind of going through this right now because yeah. they can't agree on anything. Yeah. They're a mess over there. And Break not saying that the Democrats too. are doing well either. Like they're a hot mess too. Like <laughs> don't even want to go there, but <laughs> it like, awful. at least like, you know, I mean, sometimes conflict can lead to like a better outcome in the future. Yeah. So that's yeah. what I think is happening. And I just hope it's hoping for. I completely agree. Worthwhile conflict where there's like some layer of communication where that where each each side is hearing the other, even if it's just a shred. Right. Um, but my only hot take was if you and as a fellow athlete, you know I'm here for good athletes. If you think Herschel Walker was not <laughs> pro-choice, 
I that's my Ma'am. main hustle. Line. There's absolutely, <laughs> there's receipts, which I don't even say receipts, let alone something like that. Zero judgment in any capacity. I'm clearly pro choice. The fact but, that you said receipts uh, with an S. I know. Not just it's, one time, multiple times. That man is insane. I, like, that was so, and did you see him like moonwalking? Oh, and I don't I know. Can't. Like, what, that, who thinks we, this shit? We idolize our celebrities out here. Are you, of course, our athletes. And you know, I'm one of those with my Michael Jordans and my Whitney Houston's and all this. But like, there is a time when you, you just got to stay in your lane. And right. like, that's enough. Like, you know, Whitney doesn't need to be president. Kanye doesn't need to be president. We don't Thank need to hear all my views on certain things. Like, you know, you. let's, let's, oh let's breathe God. it on out. Okay. What a time. What a time. Now you're kinda, jogging that memory. I'm like, oh God, oh no. <laughs> I hope Shonda Rhimes is like somewhere sitting back being like, I'm going to do less. I'm just going to rewrite this in some <laughs> form and switch up the narrative and cut and paste with you. I'm we serious. And then like, put it on blast, like Bridgerton, something like Hellington or something. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> I'm in. Ellington is is very accurate. My, my dress, my outfit will be better for that one. We have the, imagine the 2023. Like, imagine like a bachelor would be like Trump. That oh is hell. God. I, <laughs> I don't know if I could tune in and give it the ratings, but I probably would just because we could podcast about it and like, I don't know. If you can't laugh at it, I don't even know what you can do at this point. Right. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> I don't know. So, okay. A serious note, slightly new gun laws and mass shootings. 2022 was marked by several more hype, more hype profile shootings, including Uvalde, Texas, Buffalo, New York, Highland Park, Colorado Springs, and Chesapeake, Virginia. On June 24th, Congress sent the Bipartisan Safer Communicate Communities Act to President Biden's desk for his signature, marking the first time in nearly 30 years Congress has approved major legislation to combat combat gun violence the law expands background checks for 20 for people under 21 and includes funding for red flag red flag law administration and mental health treatment some of the latest mass shootings of the year happened just weeks before this 10-month anniversary of the sandy hook elementary shooting mm. craziness um and i'm on cold medicine so sorry i'm sounding crazy i am definitely no, um not. yeah i don't even know where to begin on this i'm glad something's happening but yeah. it's truly heart-wrenching to think you know this many years later you know 10 years since sandy hook the elementary school like that's insane that this is still mm -hmm. not only happening but like insane. prevalently happening yeah i mean i still think of columbine because yeah. i was in elementary school which sounds wild so yeah. imagine being in elementary school and now it's like oh yeah like it's still happening and i'm well into my 30s that's yeah. insane like, what are we doing? So we, I, I I'm glad we're moving you. forward, but it's, it's not fast enough, unfortunately. No. Well, this like, I mean, some of these assault rifles and stuff, it's just, I don't understand the argument and free what choice. What do you and, need? And, you don't no other, need. Well, no other country in the world has this problem. So like, it, I mean, clearly right. we need to take notes from someone else and that's okay. Just like in business, if someone's doing it better than you, go ahead and get the cliff notes, apply it. You don't need to reinvent the wheel and right. like, make some adjustments. And I know it's not that easy, but uh, yeah, I was, uh, I played a lacrosse game the day before Columbine happened at Columbine and um oh. Yeah, I was in high school. I always forget our age difference until we, <laughs> until we talk about stuff like this. But yeah, it blows my mind. Yeah, my 18, 17 year old self was going through that. And now my 42 year old self is still conversing about that. So it's, I don't know. I don't know what we do, but um, yeah, get ourselves familiar with what we can and can't do. How do you feel about guns in general? Oh, uh, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> do I think people should be able to have them? Sure. Do I want one? Absolutely not. Okay. Um, I'm here for, you know, like what people are into in their own private homes. What I don't agree with is semi-automatic or just like guns that you use in the military. I think that is absolutely ridiculous. That are designed to kill people. Yeah. That's a hard no for me. Like you're not going like rabbit hunting with an AR-15. You're just not. So like, <laughs> I don't, like, what do you want? <laughs> what do you want? Alone. I don't, I, whatever. So, you know, I, I, I. I'm always willing to respect what people are into because, you know, they're a gun enthusiast. I don't yeah. want them to feel like, oh, you're taking this away from me. But at the end of the day, like, I mean, we don't have bomb enthusiasts, do we? Right. Or well, can we allow probably, that? But... We probably do, but I... is it no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, like, where do we want to draw the line here? 
Well, if your hobby kills people, like there's keychain enthusiasts and then there's maybe gun enthusiasts. <laughs> I think there's like, there's some area there. I am a gun owner. I'm a proud gun owner and not, you know, hating, throwing out the window and stuff. But as a yeah, single yeah. female that lives alone in the city, a hundred percent. And, you know, you, I go to classes and shooting ranges and yeah. um, you, you study, like you learn what to do and it's, you know, securely put away and I have no children right. at my house. Like, And you uh, have no issue like surrendering it if you had any mental health issues. Oh, a hundred percent. That's where the problem lies. Like, yeah it shouldn't be that hard yeah well (laughs) and I think I I agree actually the mental health conversation but we need to have both like one cannot go without the other but the mental health conversation I think is the clear one in America that we really got to lean into Mm -hmm. and um while that catches up maybe eradicate or provide some space between certain guns and certain people I agree and you know what I would even take it a step further of like let's like get rid of all of like the you know semi-automatic like stuff that is used in the military whatever like let's make that a hard no for now yeah and then when society gets better over time and we have proven that we're responsible humans and maybe just like people want to be gun collectors of it maybe we can loosen the laws then but yeah we don't uh yeah we don't need any of that right now we have proven to ourselves that we don't need any of that right now i feel like it's pretty hard to get a driver's license like i can it get like that? Like I, I mean, I went through, I filled out the form to get my gun and do the, all this stuff. And it was a little bit nerve wracking because it was weird. And <laughs> the vibe of the people, if you can only imagine it's not my crew, I'm not a hunter. And it was weird. Um, you didn't bring neon, any camouflage. It was like neon and camouflage. I like the neon, but for different reasons. And <laughs> the camo is just the vibe of the humans. It's all good, but it's just yeah, so yeah. not my zone. And I was in like fitness pants from the gym with chalk on the side and like a turmeric and tequila shirt so alcohol and, guns and they're going out hunting yeah <laughs> it's <was> totally <laughs> it was i was actually with my dad and i didn't know how to use it correctly we were just looking at them and the bottom flew off the bear like when you um when you go to load it so i looked like the biggest blonde basic ever Love it. And my dad was literally cracking up but again <laughs> hence the classes and you get you know exactly. a basic class. like it's all just a thing so anyways i'm i'm glad to see we have some progress but we need to start rocking and rolling the next direction yeah, let's tighten it up a little bit okay the next one that's kind of all i had for big year events yes there was a million other things that happened but i feel like that's the stuff that kind of stood out did you have anything else to add from those I, the only thing that you know was always on my mind if anybody follows me on twitter they know that i was relentlessly heckling the president about the student loans oh so. tell us about this i love that you're <laughs> such a twitter and i'm not playing involved. around okay like, like yeah we got this done the other uh, what about my loans sir yeah what about these loans did you get a response or what do people say you no know, you know good well they'd never respond but yeah i was not i was relentless like it would it would have nothing to do with student loans that he'd be posting or his social media person would be posting i'd be like yeah but then loans so yeah this is what i um, voted this is what you promised yeah and until you bring it to fruition i'm on your head and your yeah. neck <laughs> he, he said that was still going to continue to be addressed am i wrong oh yeah no like the it's in court right now so okay. they did approve it and the i will say this they made it very easy for you to sign up because i thought it was going to be a whole thing i thought i was going to have to find some papers okay in storage unit nope you just needed like very simple information. They could find you from there. And um, I did get an email, which I'm sure many other millions of people got as well as like your request for, um, you know, forgiveness has been approved, but it's in court. So it's okay. on hold now. So depends on what happens in the courts. Once they get through court, then they'll fully forgive uh, that $10,000, $20,000 if you got the Pell Grant. And okay. you can go from there. So I'm happy for myself. I'm happy yeah. for everybody else that will be getting this type of relief. And when you think about it, this is how do you want like America to progress? Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah. millennials, like we're the people now, like, you know, right. the, my, my parents, like they're getting older. Like it, we, it's people our age that make society so do you want to make sure that we're financially secure or do you want us to continue to struggle and one of the biggest struggles has always been like student loans getting out of debt in general yeah getting out of debt in general do, yeah. and they're like well why aren't you know uh millennials having kids why aren't they buying houses how can we do all we, of that if we're all in yeah. debt <laughs> yeah. ridiculous well and, 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 and we've learned expensive cars are expensive 
gas was seven dollars this year like what do you want from us yeah, and then you yeah. want us to birth all these children who's gonna watch these kids mm, not me i'm not even gonna go there with the whole kid conversation yeah so. it's just well, a whole thing like you're you're holding us back if you don't let us become financially like stable and, and i'm not saying that it's anybody's fault i do think that you know student loans were super scammy like the oh, way that for sure it. so my yes, generation feel like the government needs to take some responsibility for that did i take those loans out absolutely do i have the intention of paying them back absolutely but at the interest rates that they gave me and fleeced mm-hmm. me absolutely yeah. not yeah so yeah they, let's meet in the middle somewhere again well and here's the thing now we've watched our parents have those struggles with kids and bills and this and we're, yeah. we, we've had more conversation around finances it's not financially responsible for a lot of us to have children to buy a house to do these things like it's we don't want to repeat some of the stuff we've grown up with the consumer is savvy another right. hence our young people are serving another like it's going to disrupt that right. process and so even ten thousand dollars it is a lot of money some keep kids like doctors or whatever have 200k plus it still matters right. like this stuff still it adds still up it's still a i know people that if they get that ten thousand dollar like forgiveness they're good yeah. and they're they are financially free like yeah. it does like ugh. so yeah it's just highly frustrating like like do they want to be like people in like sweden or norway where you like pay people to have babies like because that's what it's going to become are they doing if that? You don't oh yeah I, oh. I forget exactly which country it is but one of them like if you're a resident like they pay you to have kids because there's oh. just nobody having babies oh interesting yeah. so okay. do they want it to be like that because i mean like they barely give us you know I any know. money in general I'm really, I'm curious on the numbers in that because as a financial, uh, well, I'm, I don't know if I'm a financial person or not, but want to be, um, do you, is it enough to cover childcare? Not that I want to raise my own kid, but I'm like, does this make financial that's sense? A, even that's if a getting very paid? Good question. <laughs> What's that's up a very ahead, good y'all? Question. We got to be out here thinking about this. I don't have the answer to that, but, okay. um, I, but you know, like their, their healthcare system and stuff like that is totally in different. that part of Europe is way different but also so, the way they I'm, eat and sleep and do life and like some other yeah. things are different so like all the healthcare is impacted differently there's they a do things. a lot of things different it's <laughs> very laid back and once again i keep forgetting which country it is it's norway or sweden or maybe both but they're so lax out there that yeah. they like when, imagine you're going to brunch but you bring your baby in like a little carriage yeah they park their carriages outside and then they go inside and have a meal that's I hope how we don't you sound like ignorant Americans outside. right now. <laughs> <laughs> and what what about England and William and Kate and <laughs> right. I'm just I'm just poking the bear right now, a hundred percent. No, I'm I dead. love it. No, no, in England they're like was does the baby have color like whatever. i know does the baby have a, a doctorate degree right now what is <laughs> right right <laughs> oh my oh is my this God. pinky out oh I'm right dead. right Okay, here's the quick list of 2023. Chime in on any of these. I'm not going to unpack them too quick, but I do think some of them are good. This is 22 things that happened for the first time in 2022. We will go quick, as if, and I'll read as best I can. Uh, Apple becomes the first company to reach a stock market value of $3 trillion. So they hit it and then kind of came down with the thing, uh, with the stock market, everything that's going on right now, but $3 trillion. Do you have stock in Apple by chance? Uh, I'm not sure. Okay. Do, you know how you can like do those basket ones where they put yeah, just like diversified portfolio. Yeah. So yeah. I, I, <laughs> I looked at it. I did a little bit of investing this year, just like, you know, low risk, blah, blah, blah. And one share when mm-hmm. I looked was a hundred and I think $25. Um, and I can't, this was like when things were going to Apple. Yeah. Just one share. So I didn't, I think I, I bought BMW oh, yeah. And, uh, well, yeah, but then you have one share. <laughs> no, I would just believe it. I mean, but why not? You can always build on it. Yeah. Because I, imagine when we're like 60 and then it's like $500 a share. And then we'll be like, well, we should have bought it yeah. in moderation. Yeah. I'm just going to go to Norway and have a bunch of kids and make money that way. I'm kidding completely. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sci- scientists pinpoint how star formation in our galaxy began. Is that interesting to you at all? I mean, I like stars and moons and things. I didn't hear um, about that. If by stars you mean Whitney Houston and Justin Timberlake. Otherwise, I'm here for science. For, I don't know a lot about it, but astrology. it's excited. <laughs> it says scientists can explain for the first time what triggered the formation of stars in the Milky Way, according to a paper published in Nature in published in Nature in January. I guess that's the paper. Researchers say a chain reaction of supernova 
about 14 million years ago led to the creation of a 1,000 light year wide bubble at the center of which lies in our galaxy. Through, uh, Though scientists knew this bubble existed, they recently discovered that all local star forming regions sit on its surface because the chain reaction pushed away the dust and the gas needed to produce new stars to the bubble's edges. Did we have Bill Nye, the science guy, unlocked. Does someone have his number? This I'm is... like, I want to know what these scientists are getting paid. <laughs> more, more than the people having children in other I countries. I not for any of this. <laughs> I'm asking for my school loans. I I'm need not to... asking for this. <laughs> I, I need to go back to school. I'm excited. Science is not my jam. I'm here for it. I'm excited. If you're excited, we got billionaires going to the moon. So maybe this will apply to Bezos oh, and Team Amazon. I don't freaking know. Yay. I wonder a if shift? that drove up like the gas. Bubbles. Who knows? Probably. Wait. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't know. Who this one? This is a turn though. <laughs> uh, number three, Victoria's Secrets. Secret. Victoria's Secrets. Here we go. Uh, secret features a model with Down syndrome. The Puerto Rican model, Sophia, who are J I R U A, Jua. I am the worst. Um, is the first woman with Down syndrome to become a Victoria's Secret model. She appeared in the fashion company's love cloud ad campaign which emphasized diversity and inclusion that's cool did you see that i did not see that but i know that they've been working on their diversity inclusion you know like they've been imploding yes. ever since like people stopped watching the victoria's secret fashion show so yeah they're just really trying to rebuild also they have there's a, a documentary i believe it's on amazon prime could I be wrong that. but i didn't watch victoria's it Victoria's secret it's great Oh, it was, it's I good. Been, I liked watching it. I think okay. they covered everything very well and how, like, why it imploded and why they're not doing well because they didn't listen. And yeah. here they are, like, yeah. kicking themselves in the butt. But I think it's great. I mean, if they ever want to hit me up, like, now that yeah. you guys are truly inclusive, maybe they, you should reach out to them. No, I'm all right. Don't get I, me with a good time. <laughs> Tweet, keep tweeting Biden, <laughs> and I'll start tweeting Victoria's Secret. Put it on your cardio list. Yes. Now I'm I'll dead. I'll take a little bit of pressure off of Biden. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, put it more towards these corporates. Let's start getting to their dollars. Shoot, you gotta have right. 10, 10 grand in ten like, seconds. <laughs> agreed, agreed. Also, like I don't want to be rude to like really old men. So what is he like uh, now? Well, I think it depends. <laughs> There's context for it. There's context for everything. Sometimes again, physical Fair. communication. All right. Uh, microplastics are detected in human blood. A study published in March in Environment International found microplastics in human blood. About half the participants in the study had uh, polythylene trepathylate, a poly, a polymer, a poly, polymer. Oh my gosh! Used in water bottles and food packaging, among other everyday items in their bloodstream. Scientists had previously established that people are exposed to micro particle, microplastic particles in plastic through the food they eat, the water they drink, and the air they breathe. My Ooh. sister was talking about this the other day. Of course so, she was. What did she like, say? Right. She just literally regurgitated everything you just said because I was like, oh, that's interesting. Hmm. Yeah. Um. I mean, I'm not surprised. I mean, I think, I mean, if you were eating American cheese, I think you were eating plastic, but that's just my personal opinion. Velveeta, 100%. Um, <laughs> Velveeta is definitely well, like 20% plastic. Extra hot take on that. I actually think the plastic is healthier than the Velveeta. So if you're going to choose one, <laughs> go with the plastic because the Velveeta will kill you faster. I think they will actually both be bad for you or they are. But if you read, I think it's like even margarine, one of them are like two ingredients away from plastic. I've read that before. Um, and you just heard how good I am at science. So definitely believe me. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that's very true. I, I, I think that's probably been around and known for a while, just knowing how we eat and consume and then how stuff is processed. So f- like free range. Yeah. Um, yikes. And I mean, like the utensils we used to use, like in the nineties, like give me a break. And like, I mean- yeah. Our generation are descendants of people who used aquaphor and ruined like the ozone. So like, yeah. of course, of course we're art plastic at this point. <laughs> as long as we're skinny, right? I'm just kidding. All these hot takes are happening. <laughs> right. I'm being completely Priorities. facetious just to be clear. Um, <laughs> scientists capture an image of the Milky Way's black hole. There's gotta be a joke here somewhere, but I am gonna let that just sit there 
Neil deGrasse we'll Tyson. Do we have you yet? <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Is we'll come back to that. Yeah. Right. Um, referees. Oh, there was refer female referees for the first time in the World Cup. Referee Stephanie Crappenpart warms up alongside assistant referees Nusa Black, Nusa Back, and Karen Diaz. Medina before the uh, the FIFA World Cup Costa Rica versus German Germany match in December at Al Bayat Stadium in Qatar. Um, oh, that's it's under the picture. That's cool. I didn't know about that either. Did you? That's amazing. I didn't know that. Yeah. I did did not you watch know any of the World Cup? And congratulations to, huh? I said, did you watch any of it, Argentina? I sure did. Yeah. I sure did. It was amazing. Uh, I, I, had, I had a blast. One of my coworkers, he is a, a, a fan okay. of the team that won. Oh, I was, was he so excited? Him. You know what? I haven't even had a chance. You know, we've been working our butts yeah. off. I haven't even had a chance check in with him also i've been giving him space because i know he's probably just losing his mind <laughs> yeah. still going crazy oh my god the um <laughs> the announcers and stuff Archie like i was tearing up yeah it was so good that was a really good game like the I, last one oh. some someone was saying it was like the best championship of all sports of all time like the game and like how it went and everything else oh, i didn't see the last one um i mean i watched it i mean I think that's a bold statement, but it was okay. like I mean, you were on your your seat, like oh my god, what's what's gonna happen? I don't know. Like it 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 was very anxiety inducing on both sides. Okay. So it was it was a great game to watch. I do agree with that. I should have said spoiler right before, but I feel like if you don't know yet, you probably maybe you're calling out of a. If hole you don't somewhere. know that Argentina won the World Cup, yeah, weeks ago, like just just go. <laughs> oh okay a, number eight andy warhol silkscreen breaks auction records in the united states a silkscreen of marilyn monroe's face by andy warhol shot sage blue maryland fetched 195 million dollars at christie's auction in may shattering a painting record for the highest price paid for an american artwork sold at auction that's insane 200 million dollars wow. I didn't know that his pop art was still that popular. Good for him. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I knew it was big only because the Rolling Stone in there. I was a longtime Rolling Stone fan uh, of the magazine, and um, that was always like a heavy conversation and part of the inspiration. But 195 million. How much was Twitter? 44 billion. <laughs> are, we, like, are we close in comparison here? I guess not. That seems like <laughs> that man's I, himself. <laughs> I just want to know this. You have, let's say, you have the money. And then you have the house to put it in. Where are you hanging that? Who's around it that you trust to be around it? Like, what are you doing with it? Like, how are you even transporting that to your house? Like, there's so many logistical things around that that I'm thinking, I think like. they put it in storage or they, like, they protect it. Some, like, put it in a bank somewhere in, like, a safe. Like, I don't. I don't and think you don't even look it. at it for that much yeah. money? Unless if they're, like, a billionaire, then they just don't care. Then, yeah, I think they'd hang it. I w I I mean, put it in storage. What does that storage unit look like? Fort Knox? Like, wh who's watching that? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Midwest gun owners. Midwest gun owners. Um, <laughs> dude, that's insane. I don't even know. Like, okay, what do you throw in like the trunk of your Porsche and or your Ferrari? I mean, people do a lot more for less. I mean, <laughs> I, I forget who it was. I'm pretty sure it was. Who is it? Snoop Dogg, I think he was paying like somebody like sixty thousand dollars to roll his blunts. You oh, I believe get, that. You can pay yeah, Ugh. I know somebody's watching over them patents for like uh, forty bucks. I need to get on that level. Okay, number nine. <laughs> South Korea launches a satellite using its own rocket. South Korea successfully launched a satellite using its. Nuri rocket built by the government's aerospace research Insti institute and domestic companies the event ushered in an ambitious new space era for the country and was rallying was a rallying point for communal pride south korea aims to land spacecraft on the moon by 2030 you're still doing that <laughs> Dude, i know the space thing i okay like i, I mean care. i guess i'm glad it's not north korea but like what oh um yay <laughs> If you're excited, I'm excited. Great. Okay. What is, I mean, what is space doing? For me? Honestly, that's what I, that's, I've, that's what I've I'm had this conversation about. and people are like, well, you got to be forging ahead because other countries are doing it. And I'm like, are they though? I don't, I don't know. Once I again, just don't wouldn't know. Be wouldn't be putting our money back yeah. there. <laughs> Go buy that painting. Get the painting. No, no, I'm no. back to the painting. Go get that. Yeah. Pop but, the trunk yeah. of your Ferrari. <laughs> get Marilyn. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> 
Uh, number 10, a paralyzed man dies by legally assisted suicide in Italy. This We did a, a euthanasia conversation in college, so I did find this interesting. In June, Federico Caboni, a 44-year-old man paralyzed for 12 years after a tra traffic accident, became the first person in Italy to die by legally assisted suicide in 2019. Italy's highest court ruled that assisted suicide is legal under certain circumstances, a widely debated issue in predominantly Roman Catholic countries. Mm. What do you I'm think about that? For it. <laughs> that? That I was think, my conclusion even in college. Yeah, I've always thought it should be a thing. And I mean, this is getting a little off topic, but I'm not the best person to ask when you're like, oh, like when zombies come or when the world ends, what are you going to do? Assisted suicide? I'm getting up out of here. Like, <laughs> take whole me. Other level. <laughs> okay, I'm glad you have a plan, number one. <laughs> um, I That is my I, plan. I think if you are not like, fight. I agree. Well, I mean, if I've been intentionally fueling my whole life and my body is, if they want to eat some muscle and I've been intentional so long, it might as well go to use. I'd rather you just put me under a tree and like nourish an old oak tree or something. But again, we will digress. Yeah. Um, I don't, I agree. I think if you're of mental health, I mean, literally, this is one of my first conversations in college. And I was like, dude, I practice. I don't care. But anyways, it was about euthanasia and your choice to die. If you, if you are not mentally stable or you're unhappy, I think if you're of mental health and you're clear on it and like your family approves of it. I know there was that controversial case of the girl with cancer that went to like Oregon to intentionally die. This was like 20 years ago or maybe not that long, but close. Anyways, I, my conclusion, you know, without a bunch of pontification, was it if you can choose and that's your choice, then that it is. I mean, we do that with animals all the time, unfortunately. But if you know they're not well. And I mean, like, if you're supposed to have complete control and autonomy of your life, like, I get, I, I think you should have autonomy of when you think you should be able to call it quits. Yeah. You know, like, I'm, I'm more of a, I, I'm all about quality of life. If yeah. I feel like I no longer have quality of life, shut me down. And yeah. that is what I plan to tell my children and my grandchildren. Like, do not the DNR all day. Yeah. Let me be. Yeah. Um, well, I do think there's an important conversation with the difference between suicide and euthanasia. Um, because I think there's two different conversations. And while it sounds the same, it's not really. And I think right. one you choose to do alone and one you choose to do consciously with the community involved. And I think that's yeah. a key difference for me. There's, it is really a whole podcast, but just with the relevance of even think yeah. talking about like Twitch, which really rocked me. It was really sad to see um, yeah. him go and potentially not be supported in that whole conversation. We did a whole podcast on that. And it's a lot of the resources that are out there yeah. now. Um, so I won't digress, but I just think but it's I important. If, like, yeah. And like, I think if you try to make it more of like a normalized thing, like then maybe suicide um, rates will go down because everybody's being involved and informed and it's not as traumatic that's right. that would be my hope right it seems to more of the suicide and I do not know the stats so again this is um as expert as I am in science Thanks. but uh it seems like it's more for suicide specifically it's mental health and then um mm -hmm. euthanasia is more physical health like disease um sure you know like it's you know car accident for 12 years like it seems like it's other like like ways of life versus a mental health conversation I don't know I, maybe I'll have to do a whole other podcast on that I just no, think, I mean that makes sense for me for sure yeah but I, I just think, think the conversation needs to happen. that because just because I just feel like a lot of people don't take mental health seriously because yeah. you can't see it right agree so that's agree. the part that sucks like of course you can see someone who's been paralyzed for 12 years and they were just over it but it's right. hard you know, if you're seeing somebody every day for 12 years and you think they're okay, but this entire time they had a mental un underlying mental health challenge. Yeah, I agree. I just hope the conversation around all of it continues and furthers. And because yeah. I think the more conversation for either side, the better we're going to get at reaching people in general. And if we can do the right thing, whatever you think that is, then that's what I want us to be able to do. Fully 13. Support that. Yeah. Women are appointed to high-level positions in the Vatican and Al-Azhar. Three women are appointed to a Vatican committee that advises the Pope Francis on candidates for bishops in the Catholic Church. And in Egypt, the Al-Azhar Mosque named a woman as an advisor to the Grand Ish uh, Imam. I'm going to mess all this up, so I apologize. Um, 
I'm, I'm t- I don't even know if I should say the name because I'm going to mess it up so bad. Chiak Ahmed El Tabay. Tayeb, a first in the Islamic institution's thousand year history. I don't know a lot about either side to this, but I'm very glad to hear that women are getting in the mix. I will just say that. And I have the same sentiments. I am not Catholic. Um, I don't I don't know what they be doing over there, but yeah. I am glad that there, there's some inclusivity going on facts and i really do apologize for the names because they are important especially in podcasting um and i should know them but i totally botched it but i will post this whole article if you want to see it somewhere so you can do it more correctly than i did 14 more americans are smoking marijuana than cigarettes uh a gallup report released in august revealed that more americans are smoking marijuana than cigarettes for the first time on record about 16 percent of the americans polled said they currently smoke marijuana five percent five five percent points more than those who reported smoking cigarettes cigarettes can you can continue to decline since its peak in the mid-1950s when 45 percent of americans reported that they smoked i'm glad that cigarette smoking is going down me too because you <laughs> i just think it's, it's and become... i mean i'm here for it me too i'm here for it. i think if they go ahead and just legalize it across the board and we just make so much money like does everybody want a taper tax like we do? Yeah. Yeah. You want some money back? Yeah. Like, come on. We even some of that revenue was down in Colorado this year. And so a lot of charities and education programs were going without because even like the weed, there wasn't any, as many weed sales. My thing is, I just think from a marketing standpoint, you don't see cigarette marketing almost anywhere. And oh and like pop culture, it's a little bit, but not really. There is some like weed yeah. and representation in music and blah, 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 but not really. But I, I don't think the two are really the same. So I'm, I agree. I'm glad to see cigarettes specifically on the decline i think that will continue for sure for sure. catholics uh, uh, oh could i cut you off oh no no you're oh. good uh 15 catholics outnumber pro- protestants in northern ireland according to census numbers re- uh released in september more catholics live in northern ireland than protestants for the first time since the creation of the united kingdom territory more than a century ago a shift has prompted rumblings about a possible referendum on re-identifying ireland Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm wondering if that has some conversation around like uh the Commonwealth. Ireland's not involved in that, is it? Oh, I would highly doubt. Okay. Mm-hmm. Cause I knew I don't know. Somebody can re- correct me if I'm wrong, but I know that Ireland is not a fan of mm-hmm. England. I love that. Tune into our Harry and Meghan <laughs> convo if you want to hear more about right. that. Um <laughs> we'll just we'll just step slowly to decide on that one. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> 16 if the they like it i love it so whatever yeah. you're into go ahead <laughs> it's gonna say follow your heart let me take me to guinness right. um the breaking <laughs> of the wand of office is televised i don't know if this is in britain the symbolic breaking of the wand of the office was televised for the first time uh during queen elizabeth ii's uh committal service 11 days after her death in september to signify uh, the end of the queen's reign the lord chamberlain broke the wand a staff that represented for her for her rule at St. George's um, Chapel in Windsor. Is it like a wand? Like they're talking a little wand? I'm sound like simple American right now, but I do you know um, what this that's is. That's a very good question. I personally don't know. Um, but, but also like my sentiments still say stay the same as yeah. in the <laughs> last episode we did. So <laughs> yep, moving forward. Um, I'm <sighs> curious if it's like literally like I just see a vision like a wand, like a fairy godmother, like yeah, maybe, yeah. Maybe it's worse. And then they broke it. It could be. I mean, whatever it is, it's probably expensive. So yeah. I don't think. Would you rather be off. buried with it? I don't think it, it lights broken? up though. <laughs> so it's not the same know. as the ones at the ice capades. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> a little Weird bit dicks. more. No, a little yeah. bit more fortification. Maybe like some platinum. Yeah, I hope. <laughs> well, rest in peace. Okay, seventeen. Um, <clears throat> the. Exturism, X T U R I S M O. Exturismo is this, is that silence? Hoover Bike makes its first public flight. A Japanese startup demonstrated its Hoover Bike in flight for the first time in September at the Detroit Auto Show. Uh, the Exturismo Hoover Bike, a flying bike that can stay <clears throat> uh, uh, up for forty minutes, will set buyers back more than half a million dollars. Plans for a more affordable electric Hoover bike at fifty thousand are in the works. Well, that's a huge price situation change. Um, okay, like so a fun time. I wonder how they're going to figure out safe 
safety <laughs> with those know. things. You're going to need more than a helmet. Yeah. Uh, I hope so. But if you're flying to go pick up your $200 million Marilyn Monroe plant painting, at least you can avoid traffic because you're in a hover bike. So you can just hover through, drop it off at your safe, oh, walk them both away. Oh, We're okay. Having a conversation. 18. <laughs> NASA smashes a spacecraft into an asteroid um, in a planetary defense test. I did see this. NASA purposely flew a spacecraft into an asteroid in September, altering the asteroid's trajectory in a test mission that has implications for future asteroids that could threaten Earth. The double asteroid redirection test, or DART, was the planet's first uh, planetary defense test, according to NASA. Did you see this? I did not. This is my first time hearing of this. Wow. I, I I did hear about it, and this was right when, um, what was the movie with Leonardo DiCaprio? I think it was Up. Or something simple with um, the girl that's well known in it. Uh, I sound like a parent right now, not not thinking of the names. On Netflix, right? Jennifer something. Where was like dying and whatnot. Yeah, like, yeah. The, the end, I saw that. Mm -hmm. Who's Amy Schumer's best friend? Girl. <laughs> no, girl. you're not Perfect. asking me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Jen something or Jennifer. It's gonna. I'll think of it. Anyways, they're in it. I think I uh -huh. was paying attention then because I was like, oh, is this like how the movie could really be? I sound very simple in this year in review. We, we're going to figure it out in 2023. Anyways, um, yeah, they they took down the asteroid. So I guess if a bigger one was coming, like we know how to deal with it. So we either got asteroids okay. or zombies coming at us. <laughs> one of the two. Why didn't they think of this anytime sooner? Like this sounds so simple. I, I don't have an astrophysics degree, but I would have been like, yeah, let's let's do that. Yeah, NASA would not let me in the front door, so I will let them handle this. But I do have a sweatshirt from Forever 21 that says NASA, and it has a pretty legit american flag nasa mm -hmm. patch on the side at least you're in support we try we try just <laughs> spreading the blowing up asteroids <laughs> 19 france sends gas to germany for the first time france is pumping natural gas directly into germany in exchange for electricity both countries are providing are pivoting after russia cut off its gas supply to europe in uh in what critics say is retribution for the west sanctions following russia's invasion of ukraine so here you at least see some of the ramifications of the worldly impact of this invasion on ukraine do you have any thoughts on this yeah. um i mean i didn't know that this was happening i am glad to see that they're working together yeah so good sign i you know i I do feel like most countries are kind of like in agreement of like, okay, like this is inherently wrong. Like, let's yeah. figure this out. So agree. I like um, to see that. Yes. I mean, I think everybody wants to, we'll just go into him and figure it out, but obviously that's not the case or would have happened by now. I do. I agree yeah. with you. I think just like in our conversation around like social and racial justice, once the dollar comes in and the business starts moving, things are going to start to change. Mm -hmm. So even while slow, yeah. if you're tackling the pocketbook, like something's going to shift and then strategic partnerships are coming in and we shall see. So it's kind of natural is natural ish selection. I've actually been talking about this a lot, like professional natural selection, like don't listen, don't diversify, yeah. don't include and just see how it goes over the next 10 years and wonder why you're well, not look. there when you don't Victoria's secret. Okay. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> uh, 20 uh, Neanderthal clans remains are found in a Russian cave. Scientists have uncovered the first known remains of a Neanderthal clan in a cave in Russia, according to a, a study published in the journal nature in october the findings have led to one of the largest genetic studies of a neanderthal clan including a father and daughter to date scientists believe this group of about 11 neanderthals thals uh, died likely around the same time fifty four thousand years ago possibly from starvation mm -hmm. um is this I i'm assuming this isn't like a racially charged clan that's all i think of when i think of clan but i don't know if that's just a scientific term <laughs> Um, in Russia, <laughs> maybe it's just a scientific um, grouping, like it's called a Neanderthal clan. Oh yeah, no, that's yeah, that's what they're called if it's like super, super old or like in anthropology. Okay, but <laughs> a, a, like a group of them. And I actually think it's Neanderthal, yes, but... not tall. There's two different versions, and this is Thal, just to be clear. Okay, and I mean, like, I'm sure clan is being spelled with a C and not a K. Yeah, yeah, it is. Mm. <laughs> so we're good. <laughs> we need to go back to middle school. Okay. Uh, 21, the first person of color heads the British government, uh, Rishi Sunak. Do you know the name by chance? 
British? Mm-hmm. No, okay. Was born in Southern England to parents who immigrated from British colonial East Africa. His grandparents were from the Punjab region of India. In October, he made history at, as the first person of color to become prime minister of Britain. He all he is also the first person of the Hindu faith to sit in that office and may even be the first prime minister who comes to the job with more wealth than the British royal family. Oh, okay. Ooh, that's exciting. That's some, some tea on tea right there. Yeah. Uh, okay. Mr. Sunak, and again, I apologize for these names, a former banker and his wife, whose father co-founded the information technology company Infosys, are worth an estimated 730 oh, million pounds, money. about 870 million. The late Queen Elizabeth Woo. II's wealth is estimated around 370 million or 440 US dollars. According to the Sunday Times Rich List, Mr. Sunak was the Chancellor of Executor under Boris Johnson, ex- Executor of Boris Johnson. He replaced Liz Truce, the embattled Prime Minister who served only 44 days. That's it. Forty-four days. That's and yeah. that's in that's something that needs to be researched. And she right there. still got a pension. Like she's still she's <laughs> yeah. good to go. Dude, that's like, hilarious. That was the funniest story ever. Um, <laughs> I don't know a lot about this, but I'm super interested in knowing not only you're coming in, but you're coming in with more money. And there there feels like an emerging hey. plot twist here, whether we know it or not. But did you know anything of this story? No, I had only heard about you know the lady who served like forty-four days. Okay. <laughs> I didn't. I so think I, didn't I know did hear about came that. Came in after her. Okay, that I feel like this should be like really world news. I mean, I will take accountability if I straight up missed it, but that's a pretty big deal, especially with Harry and Meghan and all this coming out. Like, this feels like a juxtaposition of like overarching conversation yeah. of everything they're doing. Well, I think that's. I I think it's great because yeah, like people are voting this man in. Like, like England wants to change, which yeah. I'm. I'm. I'll be excited to see. So uh, once yeah. again, I think it'll be a very interesting conversation around the monarchy. And what do y'all do? Yeah. <laughs> what do you, what do we use? What do, what do you, we need? So uh, dude, I think I'm... this should be interesting. And especially since he comes from money, like, will we get them into like a good, like spot financially? Will we help them make really good sound decisions for the country? I'm excited to hear about that. Yeah. All I'm thinking is if you already have money, that means you already have strategic partners. So you're working with someone somewhere that also moves chips. So whatever it is, I know you have a team of something somewhere and I am happy about that and always here for all things evolution. Yeah. I can't wait. (laughs) Stay tuned on TNT. Um, And I did say earlier, I'm like, that's some tea on tea, like tea from there. It was a very, very cold medicine. Yeah, 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 yeah. (laughs) We want to bring it back just so you can cringe (laughs) a little more. All right. 2022. We made it through the list. The FIFA World Cup is hosted in the Middle East for the first time. The 2022 World Cup was held in Qatar. um, A first for the country and for the Middle East. This is also the first World Cup to take place in the winter in the Northern Hemisphere. Qatar spent billions of dollars building facilities and upgrading its infrastructure in the lead up to the event. Thoughts? That's a very very interesting topic so if people have time there is a documentary on netflix about this and how basically qatar uh bought their way (laughs) into getting you know the vote so that's been very interesting and then also people have been talking a lot about uh you know kind of like from an environmental and uh, environmentalism standpoint of what happens to all these buildings and infrastructure once the world cup olympics what have you leaves yeah. and the answer is nothing so yeah. very interesting I, stuff these conversations have been going on for all, from all the olympics cuz they all these countries spent all this yeah, money still do this. Us. and yet, I know. still let us deteriorate into nothingness i, I think it's ego <laughs> i really do like come to my house oh, for be sure. the best and yeah i don't know okay that's that list let's get on to what we care about because we are a few shades above simple americans um i'm only speaking for myself but pop culture uh i know you have some heat for us so hit us with the hot takes what 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 you coming in with (laughs) um i only have one thing my one oh i'm astounded okay this is so and i'm sorry this is going to be so silly but um did you ever watch any of the verses like uh oh <laughs> timberland and swiss situation yeah i think i saw the alicia so keys they one. Had... oh 
that that was you, no there's way better things you could be doing okay. with your time that's a snooze fest the one i'm talking about that happened this year it was mario versus um who was it oof god it was so bad oh marion my oh, god it was so great it was uh, one of those it was so bad it was like watching a car accident that it was so good and okay. then they had like opening up for them so uh ray j oh he's still uh, around that's ma'am oh. like i'll send you i'll send you a link but please he, it was horrible like that man was not singing could i don't know what notes he was singing they were not notes that happened wow. to be on a piano it was horrible and that's okay. what made it so great they were all drunk it was it was a grand old time. It was oh one of those God. like, this is so bad that this is so good. Like you just needed one of those moments. <laughs> wow. <laughs> While you're out. It must have been notable because that was like your top thing. Like like no Will Smith. That's my slap. top thing. <laughs> okay. We still like me and my best friend, me and my partner, we still make jokes about it to this day. <laughs> it was okay. Send me the I link. will say this. The DJ was amazing, but like, think of like all the songs that we were into, like early 2000s, late yeah. 90s music in between each act. So that's the part that it was like, oh, yes, this is, oh, I was in middle school. Oh, I was in high school. Like, you know, the good yeah. nostalgic yeah. music that we're into. So that's, that was great. Performances were insane. Omarion can't sing to save his life. Mario did circles around that man. And Mario's he's, he's also a villain. Like he was. Mar but also you didn't know you don't really know his personality yeah i thought he was just like some classy man no he okay. was like you say a villain <laughs> ridiculing he was a villain he was okay, but okay. The villain you need because omarion was that bad oh so, wow i can keep going yeah really well good. even if it's bad look at even the press time they're getting now clearly this is big press um but they're getting like airtime yeah. so like maybe it worked out like that's okay i oh, wonder no, if they like, get more downloads that's what made it so great that's what made it so great because Omarion has been on this whole, like, you know, his group B2K, like they're outwardly saying how much they hate his guts and how he's trash. Yeah. Yeah. And he's been saying like, I do meditation. I do yoga. I rise above, but there was no rising above. <laughs> and that's, <laughs> it's out there. It's out there. That person, I, woo, you know, best. I don't watch uh, the Kardashians, but I, I saw one episode where he was like going on a date with, chloe and this is before chloe now it was like chloe like but tristan a human who, who, you know they dated everybody and they oh yeah no who, before who, tristan this was like i think it was an episode i saw like five or six years ago like before all of the full body makeovers and everything and i think uh -huh. when she looked like more like a person which i'm not even gonna commentate on any of that stuff but um it was one episode where they were like dating or something he was on the episode and that's kind of who? all that i she remember was dating him. who uh chloe Omaria? yeah that's insane. Omarion is like five foot. Unless five. I'm completely wrong, but no, I'm, 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 I'm being like, generous. I'm ninety eight percent. That was like six feet tall. That's yeah. okay. They, okay. Wait, wait, I shouldn't say they were. Okay. He was on the show, and it looked like there was romantic interest. So I don't know if they were dating or not, or maybe it was. But it was definitely on it, and they were friends and whatever. So I'm just putting it out there. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's it's oh it's I'm unsurprised by most things. My quick list was it was short like yours. I said Will Smith in the slap. I think we're all tired of talking about it. Oh my god! You know what? <laughs> that's why I didn't, that's why my list was one thing because I'm like I knew it was gonna be some. I knew There's it. Some, some and shit. okay, so now that all of this time has passed, what do you think? I'm just over it. It happened. We saw it. I hope what we needed to learn. We learned from it. I don't think he handled. I think he needs to heal. Take some time. Take a breath. You are an influencer in this Ooh. world. You do have a lot of leadership. Like, let's, we can do better. Like, that can, whatever, yes, defense, whatever. Like, we just, we know we can't do that in this day and age. So, I talked about physical communication. Fine, time and a place, not on stage. <laughs> Talk about physical communication. Yeah, not on stage with a billion humans watching. Like, let's work this out. We got to do better. That would be my take. What's your take? Woo. Um, uh, <laughs> I mean, my take is still the same. I think if you read his book, and you don't idolize him you would have seen it coming a million miles away like i i was not surprised at all i was like oh okay. well mm, here we go <laughs> um also like you know good for him like you know bolstering the economy uh shout out to my cousin alicia <laughs> she has a santa sweater and it says <laughs> keep santa's name out of your mf and mouth favorite oh my god that's hilarious year. what where did she it's, get it from it's i'm gonna ask her willsmith.com 
I hope he's monetizing <laughs> I it. So. I am I am weak if he's, if he's monetizing it. Start, he better capitalize. Dude. I mean, <laughs> the England is. So why don't you just do call the Rota, <laughs> the in-house press, like right. let's bring it full circle. Knows. Oh my god. Honestly, All right. Moving that. on. This is almost as deep. Benefer 2.0. Oh God. You mean uh <laughs> no, what what were they calling her? They were calling her Thanos. That's what her new name is. Thanos? Like Thanos. Elizabeth uh, like you Theranos? The Theranos no. girl? No, no. Are you, you don't watch Marvel movies, do you? No, you know I don't I don't do any of that. I do documentaries. Oh god, okay. I know I don't know any of those. Think of the Avengers, the last bad guy. His name was Thanos. He had this glove. And it had all these jewels on it. So they were okay. calling her Thanos because she had like a million different like engagement oh. rings that she collected. Okay. See, jeweled glove, I think Michael Jackson and Rhinestone. So <laughs> off there. you lost me. No, it was a little <laughs> more heavy duty and sturdy Dude, than that glove. <laughs> that's, oh wait, real question. And I'm impressed if you know this, but did she get to keep the original ring or did she give it back to him? I don't know that. Actually, I'm not a Jennifer, uh, I'm not a fan of that lady. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not not a fan. I'm just not like I wouldn't know anything. Like I don't know. I don't. That's why I don't know. Because I'm like mm, I don't know. She gives me okay. weird vibes. Also, yeah. um, you know, social media update on Twitter. People have been revealing how terrible of a human she is. Uh, I've been kind ben of likes to that. try to tip people, like service people who try to tip people, and she'll take the money out of their hand and give them a five dollar bill. What? She oh. tells her drivers not to look at her. It's a whole thing. I've heard that kind of stuff. She's a yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. She's I mean, a I will. I never fully believe either <laughs> side. Like, I'll wait for my own experience if it ever happens. Until then, side I always. But that's for everybody. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I just. I think it's funny. But honestly, if you have the Theranos glove or whatever it is you so reference, that sounds like a <laughs> retirement plan to me. If you've got every finger with a situation, so maybe it, the joke's on us because she's got a retirement in the bag. None of it's. It's all paperless. Oh, There's I, no tracking. I mean, to be honest, I don't think it's ever been about money. Like she I don't just, either. I think there's some women in the world, and like some women want to be married, some women don't. Like that's okay. And some women, I, I don't know. Like they just want to be wanted and she yeah. she doesn't give me long-term relationship vibes that's and if, and maybe they deserve agree. each other maybe Ben is kind of weird too I don't know I don't know but I do think they deserve each other good for them for coming around after 20 years like why Hashtag not whatever I know <laughs> why I'm not? With you. um <laughs> this is an equal space and it can be a two-second response Harry and Megan wonderful happy for them listen watch, to the podcast yeah watch it watch the documentary then listen to the podcast um taylor so swift versus, oh you definitely you have to but this is specifically for you just because i know you're a fam taylor swift versus Ticketmaster. um tell me your hot take but i will i put this on here intentionally because there's business disruption but what is your space um my hot take is who is paying to go see it anyway <laughs> i mean I, I i wouldn't but i would i would have i wasn't gonna wait in line but if i got tickets or something i would totally do it but it wouldn't have been on like my top 10 list, but for all the ones that are, I follow your heart or don't follow your heart. If you're in Taylor, my thing is Ticketmaster is the biggest flea situation ever. It, they're wild. it's fees on top of fees. I think it was like a hundred dollars. Yeah. Crazy. So I don't know what the shakeout is of this, but I'm, she does make a point. Like she, she went to court for $1 when a radio guy touched her butt or something like she's going to drive it in there. So I'm glad if we need someone to disrupt that relationship in that business situation, I am a hundred percent behind that. Um, so yeah. that's that it's craziness. Uh, a couple losses. And I don't know if you knew this and then we'll move on to our stuff. Um, but Bob Saget and Naomi Judd, I do think those were two relevant humans. Oh. To, that were notable. Naomi did a lot and in, in just an intense conversation on mental health. And then Bob Saget was an un, uh, unexpected loss. Uh, it was a lot of good he did in the world. I think people didn't know. So just respects to those two. Did you have anyone else you want to add to the list? Mm, rest in peace to take off. Yeah. Um, was Nipsey Very Hustle sad. this year? Very was that two sad. years ago? No, Nipsey Hustle died a few years ago. Oh, was that a few years ago? I have no sense of time. And then, of course, years that was heavy. But the marathon, the marathon still continues. I believe he died in 2020. Okay. 2020. Oh, um, yeah, it's a lot. I get, yeah. I literally can't even think of what year is what, but it's still in the brain in here. Okay, are we ready for this? I know. I know. And it, like, it keeps going. Oh, God. 
Oh man. Um, okay. So if you listen to us, <laughs> smooth transition here. Uh, if you listen to us last year, a year before that, are which are we, have we done like four of these? I can't even remember at this point I can't either. I think to so. Be honest. <laughs> Anyways, we're here now. Oh, That's all that matters. We're hanging in there. Um, <laughs> I like forward. this. You were moving forward. I like this tradition. If you're listening, go download this sheet, do it every year, stick it somewhere yes. where you can look at it. And I just put it on my documents, um, like on my word. So it's on my computer and stored. It's a quick thing, but it was really cool to see my last year to this year. Ashley and I are going to like put our personal stuff out there. Um, well, not too personal, but personal ish, um, of what we're doing oh. and where we're, where we're checking, unless you want to, you follow your heart, uh, what we're doing. <laughs> And I really encourage you to do it. I think we had a little traction last year, but I would love to see this be a thing for people because it's quick, it's simple, and it's a good way to check in. So why don't you kick us off with your personal goals um, for 2023? Um, Personal goals for 2023. So if you know me and know me well, you know that I usually like to meditate on like what my goals are, but kind of like what we were talking about in the beginning of the podcast is... I feel like I've been grinding so, so much and I've achieved so much that I'm, I really need to take a minute to be like, okay, well, what goals do I want now? Yeah. Cause I've, I'm in like a really good space. So it's like, oh, I need to go and figure out some new goals. So yeah. that's kind of like where I'm at in the moment. Okay. Um, But, but I mean, you know, like you always have like smaller, like professional things and, and personal things, but I think they've, I think they've kind of like remain the same at least I will say like when it's like personal stuff that I'm looking forward to is just to continue with like the like tools that I use like therapy meditation and you know just making sure that I'm always like widening my perspective on life the world stuff like that because I mean that's been very like life-changing for me yeah. so that's kind of where I'm at no like hard goals yeah. right now also I'm just trying to like like stay more open yeah instead of like I have to get this done or else you know I I said something similar like letting go and whatnot but I I looked at my old one and it was kind of similar to this I'm, I carried over some of those things like these were quick 10,000 but fuse views but continue to do clean eating and committed training sleep and morning routine bedtime routine less tv so these are like specific things be more still more meditation and creativity paint and create so just more of that stuff but that was kind of similar um to what I put for 2022 which was interesting and I think for all okay. the things to your point that didn't come true air quotes in 2022 I was I kind of think I was in some of the same spaces, like, did I really want that? Like, was it really things yeah. that I wanted and it did it not come true because I didn't do the work or whatever, or because I didn't truly want it. So I think there is, was there's some routine. evolution. Yeah. 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 And I re I remember us having before months before, you know, us chatting right now, but I remember we were talking about that. Like, well, I haven't done this, but I don't want that anymore. But I yeah. think the part of life is like, you at least have to go out and try to even know if you want it or not. Yeah. Like if you don't like move at all, like you have no idea what your life could have been. So it's, I think it's good either way, Agreed. whether you achieve it or not. Agree. Um, what well, <laughs> that's kind of like the letting go. Cause it's going to happen or not. I do think you need to intentionally do the work, right. but also things larger order is going to kind of pinball you where you need to go. Um, so pack a helmet yeah. and tequila, but you should know that by now. Did you write down specific goals? Um, I said uh, one word for 2023. Yeah. So my one word for 2023 is, well, actually, no, I didn't do that one. Okay. My word for, no, hold on. I thought we, hold on. Don't we always like go backwards and then forwards? I knew what my, okay, let me. Oh, we might, we might, I word. think we did a word for, um last year so what my la word last year was yeah. courage and then you do one for 2023 yes. we're figuring out the yes, so, stay with us <laughs> i know we're we're working through it here <laughs> stick with us um my word for 2022 would be fulfillment or attainment so i would say 2020 and 2021 i spent those two years just really like grinding like i was 
working on like not necessarily getting into a new career but just like getting into a role like that would be like my dream role so yeah there's a lot of like studying and and acquiring like certifications like like all of that stuff it was really aggressive and then you know from a a personal standpoint there was a lot of like personal work that I had to do so a lot of therapy a lot of learning how to meditate a lot of letting go of friendships that and relationships that do not serve you in order for you to move towards friendships and relationships that do serve you so I feel like 2020 and 2021 I did all of that hard work and I was just like oh god like you know when you're just like God, I hope like I'm not doing this for no reason. Mm -hmm. I feel like 2022, I finally saw the fruits of all of my labor. So Amen. that's kind of what I would, that's why I want to call 2022 like fulfillment and attainment. And I'm still mulling over what I want 2023 to be because I'm like, okay, like I've, I got my dream job. Yeah. I'm in like a really good relationship. All of my friendships are really great. All of my all of my relationships with my family members are really great. Like, okay, how do we, what, what else do you move forward to? So that's where, that's the space that I'm in right now. So maybe your word is forward. Maybe. Yeah. I like be, that. Yeah. It doesn't have to be deep on. I think people overthink what it is. Mine. I think usually it's the first thing that comes to you and to not overthink it. But I mean, that was definitely the theme of everything you just said. So as a branding professional, we're just going to unpack that i'm here for it and i thank um, you for the free advice you're, oh no i'll invoice you don't worry i'll send you an invoice right now <laughs> i'm just kidding um, i'm changing my email as <laughs> acceptable <laughs> acceptable um i yeah i'm totally with you i think i was unknowingly a little bit more in that space last year and then this year i'm i actually had a deeper sense of clarity around a lot but also intentionally seeking clarity on stuff because I, I think yeah. i've whittled through more of what i don't watch want which has put me more on path of what i do want um Beautiful. and some of yes yeah and some of those things i think that i didn't know i wanted was more just fear-based because i had been in those situations before and it's like ugh, getting back into like corporate strategic partnerships and doing this mm -hmm. path and it's like mm -hmm. i remember all that fuckery like do we really want to go there but it doesn't have to be that yeah. way so and i think that. that you've proved to yourself that it isn't that way i'm actually very in particular for you I don't know if it was your your specific goal but all of the CrossFit you've done like those competitions <laughs> amazing the, yes amazing I, and I didn't see that coming I really didn't know I didn't either I, we didn't and it was weird to be in it well can, it, and this is it kind of shows up in my list um I didn't really say like eat healthy and like working out but like that was like a thing like you're you like really took it to the limit with like the competitions you got into it and yeah. I was super proud of watching well thank you I appreciate that and you guys you saw I mean the shift when you go to that level which was so good and this I hope if my young people are lis listening because 2023 I really want to lean into leadership and helping leaders build leaders and that's what the podcast has always been around it's you people like you my people out there you're you're leaders and everything you do in your family in your home in your job in the way you walk down the street all of it and really emphasizing that because ironically one of my little kiddos that I train with she's 15 she's young she's already a little rock star at CrossFit she happened to be on one of my like fun event teams we got they put us on and I was blown away how this young human was so committed whatever and just and I didn't care how good that she was at CrossFit just her training and her focus and this is a little kid that is like really doing adult things I'm like this is what we need these people and ironically she was there today I haven't seen her in like six months and I was like oh my god I didn't tell her all this because she'll think I'm a weirdo but um she's <laughs> such a little rock star and like I just know whatever skills she's learning from sports I've always said life skills through sports but through this commitment and all this and there's no one else in the class that's as young as her but that is going to carry over to what she's doing now and I've tried to spend a lot of time leaning into my young self because I was similar ish to that she was certainly more committed than I was yeah. but there was shit I just didn't care about and I was focused and I was gonna do it and it's like leaning back into that energy so even though I was training this is a very long way to point for CrossFit with the mindset of competing I actually think it was training me for something completely different but universe was like this oh, bitch isn't gonna listen that's, unless we think that's, it's sport, that's what I think sports is and yeah. that's why I think we always refer back to like being like a teamwork team human like yeah. it has prepared you for all kinds of things that you've in encountered in life 
it's, yeah. it's life skill building facts. Well, but even like all the project management stuff you've done, which is like leading projects, but like leading humans, being a leader. Like, I think that's phenomenal Intel and education for family leadership, for community leadership, for everything else in your life. Do you feel like you yeah. pulled any of that for your life? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, I mean, having this type of job makes you want to be more organized. Yeah. Like, you know how like you're very organized in your work life, yeah. but not so much in your personal life. Like it helped me level up. I'm like, yeah. okay, I need to be applying all the principles and how I get people into shape at work. I need to be doing that for my, my personal life as yeah. well. So yeah, I, I agree. Fitness <laughs> is my accountability for that. It's like, well, if you're going to stay up and eat a wine and cheese plate till 11 and then be tired and feel like shit during the workout. Then I'm, I'm pissed off at the workout. So I know I'm not going to do that. Then we're going to go to bed a little yeah. earlier. We're going to eat a little bit cleaner. We're going to like all those yeah. things, like such an accountability piece. But if you know something varsity is keeping you accountable, you're leveling up. Like the vibes are raising. So you got to stay in it. Yeah. I feel like, it, I guess like a main point in life is like to just be an organized human and yeah. you'll learn that even in, you know, like for me, project management, you have to be highly organized in order to be successful. And in your realm in sports, you have to be highly organized and know how to prioritize and make time for the things that matter in order for you to be successful. Yeah. So I think that's like mm -hmm. a life lesson that like you just relearn with every like 10 years, I would, I Agree. guess. <laughs> what was the 80s every thing you might have been? With the rainbow is like the reading rainbow and it's like the butterfly flying around and it was like educational video. Yes. I feel like we just did that. Yes. Um, we need to I don't, do a new one. Yeah, seriously, like a more gangster butterfly. Um, <laughs> this is, I, I had a quick list. I think I cut off the top of it, but I think this is like things you hope for in 2023, but I just made a quick list. <laughs> Sell ambassador course, full court press, continue to update it, monetize podcasts, win right, ambassadors and partnerships, um, work with one several large brands this year, more time in New York City in the mountains and more YouTube and live sessions. Did you make a quick list of any of those things? Okay. Um, wow. <laughs> First of all, those, those are 10,000 foot view. All of ones. the things. Yeah. <laughs> you got to get back Mine to New York. Are, I mean, ouch. Hold on. What am I, what am I trying to do <laughs> with my life? <laughs> you just preached on organization I love this so much right now I know I mean like yes like organization for sure but I think I think I've just I keep going back to the point of like I've worked so hard yeah and I've been doing so much that I'm I just don't want to like push myself not that I don't want to like achieve new things but it's just like man I need to take a I need take a, a breath beat. well yeah let it all <laughs> need a the breath Again, fitness metaphor, you cannot keep training without recovery. Like recovery exactly. is a part of the retraining process. So pull back and listen to your body and like, let mar let it marinate, man. Yeah. Either my word for the year is forward or recovery. We're, we're fleshing okay. that out, but I would say like continuing physical activity. Um, I've gotten into spin, well, gotten back into spin class. I used to just kind of like do it here and there and like mix it around with other things that I was into but now I'm like oh yeah like let's just do this and now it's turned yeah. into like a social thing so yeah me and a couple of my friends go together so that's been a fun activity to do um what else I just really want to like excel at my role like I know yeah. I'm good at it but I want to excel and like just really like see where I grow in the company because I really enjoy what I do and I want to see like where I can take that and how like further I can grow like over the years that I'm with my company. So yeah. just doing that and honestly, just continuing to learn and absorb because the, the stuff that we do is not only is it just really cool, it's just very like big, it's really yeah. big, high level stuff. Yeah. So I, I will say like my main goal in like 10 years, like, you know, I'm an entrepreneur all day. I want to just take all of that I've learned and done and like have my own business or yeah. contract or consult, whatever, but whatever would make me ready for like, you know, like having kids and, you know, being around and being a supportive parent. So yeah, that's kind yeah. of like my overarching, that's always been my overarching goal is like, what moves do I need to make strategically to you know like for getting married and having kids because yeah. so like yeah you want to make some more money because we're millennials and whatever we already have that conversation 
And yeah, like, do you want to spend time with your kids or do you want to be working all the time? Okay, then I need to think like, am I going to be working at a company for the rest of my life? Or am I going to own my own business and have a little bit, little bit more time? So yeah. those are the things that go through my mind and kind of like drive forward like my decisions. I like it. Uh, I think there are, yeah, there's, th those are big things. And I would, I would say dream big on all of that because the possibilities and the mindset of abundance, like, especially if you're intentional and you're showing up and like, you feel like you're on path, I think it can be bigger yeah. and better than you even dream. And maybe that's even like oh, retired yeah. sum of money and you staying at home. Like, I think it can be like whatever your, your heart desires. Yeah. Um, you're going to have to talk things. to my partner about that. He's, he's been saying that he wants to be the stay at home dad. So, oh, okay. <laughs> You mm -hmm. let me know how I'm that like, goes. Okay, do I get three square meals? Yeah. Because I'm going to be very demanding <laughs> if I'm the only one working around here. <laughs> okay, keep the therapy going on for both sides. That would be my well, only yeah, suggestion. Yeah, I know. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like I don't, I mean, we'll see. We'll see how, how fun you'll think it is. <laughs> I was going to say, I mean, I'm the oldest of four and I remember youngest was born when I was 13 and I remember like, I think it's great. And I think if you love it, you love it and whatever, but to each your own. And I would say cross that bridge when you get to it. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. I believe me. I'm open to it. <laughs> oh, I love it. Okay. All right. Two blessings for this year that you wrote down or two. Oh, wait, I, I did blessings, blessings that happened this year or yeah, actually, this is more of the, I guess, the reflection. I think I mixed it up anyways, but yeah. I wrote two blessings. Oh, I think I, I I did it the mindset that happened this year that are going to prepare me for next year. Mm, so in the future. So <laughs> what were your I two blessings? That. And see, that's, that's where I feel like, you know, how I keep talking about, like, I did all of the work and now it happened like the past two years and now everything happened this year. So I will say my two blessings and they can be kind of, well, one isn't vague, but I will say like, got my dream job, which mm -hmm. I, to be honest with you, I didn't think I was going to get my dream job until like a few years down the line. I thought okay. I was going to work up and like maybe be headhunted for something else. Okay. So very shocked that it happened this yeah. fast and very thankful. And yeah. then the other thing is more of like a higher level type of thing. I just said, perfect timing. So um, people who do know me, they know that my partner that I'm with now, like we dated like seven years ago, we just needed some time to like time apart, grow up, be a, be an adult and then come back together. And it's like amazing. So that's been really oh. cool. And like, I kind of said <clears throat> before, like, just like perfect timing of like me being in therapy, like other family members being in therapy and like, we all get along really well now. Like, it's just, yeah, I just feel like all of the like patience that I've had has paid off oh. this year. So okay. that's, that's been like really, really big blessing for me this year. So um, are we going to talk about challenges? Cause I remember that. Oh was yeah. Like yeah. No, we, we got blessings, challenges, two points of personal, two points of professional growth, two things. Yeah, yes. we, We're still going. Um, my blessings outside of my dog being the most outside the door. I have no idea what she's doing. Oh. Uh, <laughs> sweet God. I call it. I, yeah, I was gonna say you already know. Um, downtime is brought know. back, <laughs> dude. I I need to figure. out I think I need to start yeah. eating dog food if this is the energy energy she has because it's a whole thing. Um, but two <laughs> blessings. Downtime is brought back. Drive time. Um, and feeling the competitive fire in fitness again. It's preparing me for something else. Kind of yes. what I talked about earlier. I think I I pulled back personally, professionally, and just chill. I didn't feel the push or inspiration, not in a negative way, but I was just not into a lot yeah. of things um, outside of working mm -hmm. out again, which like that's kind of my soul. So it was really nice to be back in it. And a lot of events actually didn't go the way I wanted them to go. And I it was almost weird and like it was like being back in high school and you already graduated and it was bizarre because it's like a lot of the same people and it was awesome. And I'm so thankful. Yeah. So many of those people are back in my life, but it was it felt a little weird. So I don't know that the competitive space was the track I needed to be on. It was more just get in that mindset to get on to whatever I'm supposed to be yeah. doing. So that was a huge blessing for me this last year. I, I don't think I saw coming at all. So that was good. And for anyone that competes or knows. So happy. I was so happy. Yeah. When the fire is on and you're excited about something, like it's on, but there's no fake in it. Like it can come on and you're into it yeah. or you're not. Like there's no gray area. So I was glad it came on. All right. Two challenges. Two challenges for me this year. I would, oh my God, when was that? May, I was laid off. What a challenge. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Time. 
oh my god I forgot about this no, yes right it was like so long ago but yeah like just being laid off is like a whole experience in itself you always, like you're not supposed to take it personally but it's hard not to so yeah. like dealing with that aspect of it and then uh I work in the tech industry so everyone in tech was being laid off so just trying to find a job while everybody else is being laid off was interesting so yeah. obviously found a new job thank god and then um I will say like I guess my other challenges work related but my new job it's been a very aggressive learning curve now <laughs> I'm doing I always get good feedback of like oh my god you're doing great blah blah blah, blah. like yay but this shit is hard yeah <laughs> this is yeah hard. It's, and partially like it's not because the job itself it's is hard it's because of the circumstances that have like been taking place so like some stuff that I can't really like discuss but it's been just more of like I've had to step up to the plate a little bit quicker than anticipated but the yeah. good news is I have I have stepped up to the plate gotten good feedback but that doesn't make it any less harder yeah yeah <laughs> I hear that uh, the wine intake has increased. <laughs> I think that's good. Again, my young self committed to a, a East Coast top 20 team in the country. I had no business being there, you know, Colorado lacrosse. But the second you get there, mm -hmm. man, it is a kick in the face. But you level up yes. so much faster. So I think that's that's amazing. And I have no, I'm not surprised at all. You could tread water and then out swim them in due time. Like I <laughs> like I could totally see that 100 percent. Um, yeah. my challenges were getting clarity on what I actually want, which we kind of talked about and two, being back in the competitive fitness space, but positive or all. So it was really challenging to be back in it and not be as good as I was. Cause back in the day I was training, you know, two to five hours a day, minimum six, uh, five, six days right. a week do it. And I can't even now my life. So I didn't want it to be like that. Cause there's no going back to that. Um, but just not being able to do what you did, even though, you know, you're not doing that kind of training is, is weird. Ooh. So that was challenging, but yeah. it was good to have the challenge. And I think it was good to be okay with where I was at, even though it was good comparatively, but it wasn't best me I've ever been at. If that makes sense. No, believe Believe me, I feel you. So you know how I said, like, I've really taken up spin class. Yeah. Part of that is because I used to, years ago, you know, and the pandemic, like, threw a wrench in all of this, but I used to do pole fitness classes. Oh, yes. Like, yeah. consistently. <laughs> ever, uh, ever since I graduated college and up until the pandemic. So from 2013 to 2020, um, I had done pole fitness classes. And the thing about that is if you even if you don't do it for like a month or two months, like you build calluses on your hands and yeah. wherever you touch the pole with, like in between your legs, on your knees, on your feet, you build up calluses there. So it doesn't hurt anymore. When that shit is gone, that is the most painful, oh. painful thing you could do to your body. And then you're like, why am I doing this? This is ridiculous. So yeah, yeah, I tried to go yeah. back to pole fitness class and one, it hurts so bad. Like imagine putting a metal pole between your legs and having to hang there, hang no. your body weight there doesn't feel good mm -hmm. and then on top of that it requires a level of like conditioning that I didn't realize I had like yeah I was, I was a full-blown athlete yeah like climbing up a pole flipping upside down spinning and coming down gracefully that's athlete type stuff right yeah. there so I give my younger self like major kudos for doing <laughs> that very easily I didn't think I was that in shape at the time and now that I'm like, you know, heading into my mid thirties, I'm like, you know, a sweaty pig, but you know, <laughs> you got to get Jesus. back in it. Well, I'll get back there, but not as fast as I thought, but Acceptable. that realization of like, you are not who you used to be. Yeah. Is it, it, it was rough. I almost cried after class one day. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's an awakening and you haven't done something for a while. You don't realize how bad it you've gotten. So there is an awakening yes. of like, oh my God, I can't. And I was unknowingly ramping up to stuff and I was still disappointed if I had gone in like off COVID and we were just training at home and not doing anything and like had those expectations, yeah. like there might've been a deep breakup with CrossFit because I would have been like heartbroken of how bad it was. But I mean, it's the first day is the hardest yeah. getting back and you just got to stay in it, but it it's, you got to have grace along that journey because it's going to be different. <laughs> it was rough. It's pretty, it was pretty aggressive. Oh my gosh. Okay. Two points of personal growth. We got two points of personal growth and then two points of professional growth. Yeah. So, I mean, I kind of like touched on like the professional growth, just trying to like grow yeah. into my role. Blah, blah, blah. Um, personal growth. 
I think for 2022 that I'm proud of myself is asking for help. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a very, I was always known for, well, I view myself as always being known as being very self-sufficient, but at the end of the day, it really does take a village and I just really appreciate my village, which I know you are, well, you know, you're a part of. So just like any, like, you know, just even trying to look for a job, like my friends and my family were like, oh, like, okay, like I can get you interviewed, blah, blah, blah. What is this? What do you need? And, you know, like, I mean, even like smaller things, like my party, like, you know, you'll show up with your margarita stuff and make a fabulous margarita, (laughs) but it's just more of like, asking for help instead of being like oh no 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 I got it just come and hang it's like no like you bring some ice you bring a margarita you bring a key lime pie and then we all just have a good time so like learning to delegate which is my job I've learned to like put that into my personal life (laughs) sometimes that's funny though because you can be like I can be so dialed in and like intentional and detailed at the gym and then come home and like one dog's jumping off the wall, the car's running in the driveway. And like, if there's always like some order <laughs> to the chaos, but it's c- completely yeah. different than like the gym. So sometimes it's like, sometimes the business stays at the business and the personal stays at the personal, but it's like, it's good to carry those skills over and out. It's throughout. good to mix, but yeah. also like just learning in general, like even outside of it, just being like, a business thing like you really do need to learn how to delegate in your life if you're going to have any kind of success and you need to learn how to ask for help like even with uh like for example like with my partner like he's the most helpful person you'll ever meet but I have to learn like to ask for help because I'm so used to doing things myself so it's not that he doesn't want to help me he's very eager to help me I just need to learn how to ask like yeah and it's, it could be like the tiniest of things like even at our party I'd be like trying to reach up for something super tall he's like you know I can like get that for you you know <laughs> it could be like the smallest things like I got it <laughs> I like that I, I like that he kind of encouraged the communication in that as well yeah, so yeah like move move no. I got it like and just like butt, butt you out of the way like having like yeah, making it a point to make it a thing He's Canadian. It. He's nice. <laughs> <laughs> Get it. Um, mine to a personal growth was more comfortable speaking and owning space, which I actually did a little bit in 2022 and speaking, but like leaning, I think more into the specifics and like taking and seeking opportunities and then clarity on purpose. Last year, I feel like I was very 10,000 foot view. Like, I think I want to do now. I'm like very clear that it's like leadership. I don't have fully have the plan, which I actually never will. Cause that's not how I roll, but, um, being intentional with brands and <clears throat> I think I can get convoluted in mission driven humans and change the world where it's like very dialed into like leadership, like leaders out here, getting them together and keeping it very like universal in the communication. So we are in simple understanding. Um, and I don't, I think the more clear I get on it, the more clear it makes everyone else. So that's a very, very long one to point around clarity, not to be ironic. No, I, and I love that, but I feel like that's been your journey. Like, yeah, even with this podcast started with like a very big wide concept yeah. And then you've been narrowing down, but it's all like worked out. Like totally. nothing is never not worked. Everything is worked out perfectly when you try to set out to do something for this. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. The audio, I don't know that shout out to Theon, my audio engineer would agree. The first ones were rough <laughs> till we got him. Um, but that was part of the journey and the learning. So I will take your compliment wholeheartedly. Theon was part of the journey. And yeah. Shout out to Theon. Yes. In my face. All right. Two points of professional growth. We have talked about this a little bit, but there are two things I did um, specific kind of goals on this. I basically did my own take on all these. So <laughs> lean up where you want. Um, what are like two specific goals you have professionally? Um, Kind of like what I said before, just like really like excelling at my role, like yeah. growing in the company, seeing where that takes me and then learning and absorbing for, you know, in 10 however many years that I want to start my own thing love it um I did finish the ambassador uh course or finishing but like I want to fully like like really kick it into gear and like add on to and have some legs on it but we did get it done we've got to fine-tune some things but that's done and then the second one is leaning more into coaching and developing this whole human approach and I put out the money that I want it to be a hundred thousand dollars and while the sticker shock is a lot it's a very encompassing three months thing with like eight different coaches and like human optimization from like your finances to like your neuro performance to your physical body. Um, it's a lot. It's basically all the shit I've had to pay by myself and find 
different people that could do right. it, um, personal, professional journey uh, or athletic journey. However, the key piece is like, I've been so blessed to have great people. So I've like weeded out the best ones and like the most hidden yes. fields you can find and putting that together. So long winded answer, but we're putting that I into universe. Love this. Once again, going with the journey, because you've had a journey of meeting so many people and so many cool stuff too. So I'm, this is so exciting. We're figuring it out. We are figuring it out. Um, two things I appreciate about last year. Ooh. Besides Will Smith. Um, Just kidding. <laughs> definitely a good time. Yeah. Um, things I appreciate about last year. I said staying true to setting my boundaries. Oh, so, good one. Yes. I like that. And so the way the way that I'll explain it is kind of like what I've been repeating is like, like I worked really hard for what I'm experiencing right now, but also that meant like I had to like cut some old shit off or like end certain things in order to like bring new stuff into my life. Yeah. So, I mean, for an example, like there was someone that I was dating last year, had I like let it drag on, I wouldn't be experiencing what I am today. There you go. Okay. Okay. So like that was one. And then, yeah, like just kind of what I said before, like just the thing that I appreciate is like the really hard work that I put in last year. So I'm, I, there were times like in 2020 and 2021, I'd be like, what am I doing all this for? Am I yeah. actually going to like see any return from all of this? Like, or am I just doing this and am I going to hit a wall? So mm -hmm. I'm just in a very thankful, grateful moment that I've seen change. I love that. And I've definitely seen change. And you're always one of my inspirations to like stay in like the personal evolution, stay in the professional evolution because it's constantly like this self-awareness. That's something I so appreciate about our friendship is that I always know you're like driving the edge of the knife and that's how I want to be because that's the point of whatever our purpose is. Um, but I've seen that evolution and it's I love that you just shared that because I think moments of this past year, I can totally identify with like what am I doing? What, what am I doing this for? Does it yeah. matter? Is anyone listening? Is it working? Like, you know that it is, and right. there's no point of giving up really. Um, but it's like that questioning, I think is so big. So if you're listening to this and you feel that way, Ashley's the per most perfect example of like, just stay in it. The plan might not be revealing yeah. itself in a super digestible way, but in some way <laughs> it's working. So just keep the faith and keep showing up. And then like, at some point the pivot's going to happen. Yeah. 1000%. And it may not, one thing that I will say is things may not go how you want them exactly when you yeah. want them. So like, but the timing will always be perfect. So when things do finally happen for you, you'll be like, oh, that's why like it didn't happen that time six months yeah. ago. It happened to happen like this. And on top of that, it happens way better than you would have thought. So as long as you're staying open and not being so specific of like, it has to happen on this date in this way you're going to be okay because it will come to pass. But if you put too many rules and regulations around stuff, you, I think that's where failure and like disappointment starts to creep in. Completely agree. It's such a weird balance of like letting go and like being intentional. Oh my God. And yes. talk about con control person. Yeah. So the part <laughs> of letting go was rough, especially in 2020. That was Jesus. <laughs> Dude, I yeah, I don't know. I don't have good things. I would just tell my young people, like, you have to just know that it's not going to go according to plan, but don't, but still work hard yeah. and do your plan. Like, still do it. And it yeah. makes no sense. Um, it two things go I according to plan in the best way. Like, you'll be yeah. so thankful yeah. that it didn't go according to your plan. Yeah. And like, you know, we heard that growing up, but it was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a cross practice by, right. but now I'm hearing them as, oh, maybe we should have listened to that a little more, but whatever. We paid a lot of money to figure it out. So that's great. Um, I, <laughs> so here, there's, baby. yeah, there's no, there's no, I don't know. Uh, timing. All right. Two things I appreciated about last year for sure. Getting back into fitness. It was the physical, but it was also the mental, but so much of the, my community and my mission driven humans, um, and being around the fit fam and my fellow competitors more, uh, it was so, it's not even just about 
training and what did you PR in this? It's like, oh, you also run a company and you're running a marathon. We have, there's two people I've trained with that run marathons regularly and they're doing all the extra whatever. So like they carried all that competitive energy outside the world. It's just so good to be around people like that again. And obviously I have my, my friend humans that are like that as well, but to be immersed in that, I think on a daily practice was really, really good. And my soul needs that. I'm used to like that. My young self was that. So I think I need that yeah. team practice every day. Um, Part of who you are, yeah. Yeah, just getting run over daily. I'm a masochist on so many levels. <laughs> I don't know why. My body's not appreciated that. All right, two ways I was kind to myself and self-care. So um, I did this in, in, I guess, in retrospect, like looking back, like was there two things last year you did that were self-care or two, I mean, or two things you want to do coming this year? Um, Two things that I did last year. So once again, spin class, like really got into it. So that's been great. Like that, like, especially if I've had a really stressful long work day, it's a great way to like decompress. Yeah. So just doing some sort of physical activity and making the time for it and sticking to it has been, that's been my self-care for that. And then travel like this year, I went to Jamaica and then I went to DC. Yeah. I went to the Bay area. Like I was, I was hopping all over the place. It was so much fun. So, and if you know me, you know, I thrive best in a place that is warm with like a beach. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have a traveling heart. I think that's important for you. Yeah. Oh yeah. For and sure. specifically the warm beach part. It's <laughs> um, just not the Colorado, <laughs> Colorado weather the week before or last week. Oh my gosh. That was another yeah, level. No. That was our Harry no, Megan podcast. Hard. You'll hear about it if you listen to it. <laughs> Um, two ways I did. It's funny because I love that our answers are coming up repetitively because then you know it's the truth, even if we plan this out. Yeah. I allowed myself to do less and I, I let go, but still working on um that more. So I really did pull back because I like didn't want to do anything. Like I really wasn't excited about opportunities that were coming in, but like even less opportunities that were coming because I wasn't really like my energy wasn't to it. So I really think I needed that like space to be like, okay, I'm not bored because I'm never bored. There's always shit moving, but I'm like. I think I'm ready for more. I'm ready for the challenge. Maybe we don't have to go in and have, you know, the contract with 8,000 ambassadors, which we probably will, but like, maybe it doesn't need to be a full pack of helmet situation, but I'm ready for that now. So that pause was good. We'll work on the balanced approach, but it will likely not happen. Um, and then the letting go of also like, here's what I want, but also I'm just trust that I'm prepared now and more than I was last year. And I'm ready for whatever needs to come in. I love that. You were jogging my memory. Um, I remember like meditating and getting ready for 2022 and I just kept having like a thought in my mind that kept saying like get ready get ready get, like get ready okay so I think like that was kind of like what's happening for you like you need to like take this time to like chill out yeah. because it's about to ramp up and get crazy yeah I'm I'm definitely here for it like I'm I'm ready for that um for the fire I guess I'm a little bit nervous to be honest yeah. uh but but in a good way I think I think it's good yeah I'm like you you need a little bit of nervousism <laughs> just a a little tiny hint of fear to push you forward oh yeah I'm a totally a pressure animal where it's like the world's ending go save it versus like do you want to do something today nah like let's just let's just go no. save the world <laughs> um or have the illusion that we can at least I I do think um like last year something came and I actually was thinking about this ties in I guess a little bit it's a little bit reaching we went to dinner with your mom. We were talking about fitness and stuff. And she's like, I like the feeling of being capable, you know, feeling my body, feeling strong. And I was like, totally identify with you. And you're like, yeah, but I also like <clears throat> someone that can do that something for me. And like, like there's support and space. And that had come up in my conversation last year around support being taken care of, which I'm still here for. Yep. But I really thought about that conversation a few times because I was like, well, I want both. Like, I don't, I think I swung so far of the, like, I'm ready for support. Let's kick back, whatever. But the reality, I think the fitness came in because it's not if I want the support or not that the the importance of me feeling capable, like I don't need to lift the bar a bunch, but if I had to, I know I need to know that I can do that. Or if I'm in a life situation where I need to be able to perform, I'm here for someone doing something for me, but it's important yeah. to me to be capable. So I think that preparation kind of happened last year of now I'm ready mm -hmm. because all that training and just really the mindset came in of like, okay, you're capable, you know, now, now support can come in and we can do maybe some of these larger tasks, whatever with a team. But does that make sense? Did that reaching? No, that, that makes complete sense. And I love that. But yeah. Once again, going in with like 
get ready, get ready, get prepared. Yeah. So I think you really have been doing exactly that. <laughs> I hope so. But no, I was, cause I was thinking about it and then I was like, when your mom's conversation, I really thought of it. And I was like, well, wait, like it, you do need to feel capable, but you are here for support. And I was like, why? Well, like, cause we all three have like different answers and it just like ruminated yeah. in my mind for a while, but I, it provided clarity and like it, the answer is kind of all three. It's just it, knowing like what yeah. you want, where you stand. So anyways, long-winded point. Um, I but it. I, I like that it was like, all things are like, they are teeing up, you know, <laughs> we're yeah. unintentionally like redundant. They, and, and everybody's in different like spaces and times in their lives. Yeah. So, you know, like you'll want something different for yourself. Totally. At any totally. given moment. All right. Two people you're grateful for. I did. Um, I mean, the two things that <laughs> I said, one, you won't be surprised by, uh, I guess we're kind of of last year and in moving <laughs> to next year. So any which way you want to take this. Do you want to go first? Um, I will say like this past year, I mean, I hate to like whittle it down to two people. So well, I'll just say like whatever you want. two. Uh, like, yeah. So I will say my family because in my family friends, like you guys really are like my village and you, you all really show up for me. And I, like, I talk about this all the time. I'm very into reciprocity and like, that's what I love so much. Like I show up for you guys, you, yeah. you all show up for me and it's just one whole cool situation. And I will say like, you know, new person I'm like thankful for, I'm going to be like super redundant, but my partner, yeah. he's been like, I mean, you saw at the party, how helpful he yeah. was at my Facts. holiday party, like, and the stuff that you didn't see, like he was, I don't know. He, he was like building things for me. He was like moving my furniture around. Like he's doing like a million. I was running him ragged. Like okay. It. Like ragged. And then he proceeded to like clean my apartment after everybody left. He's just a really Love good language. human. So ah. highly thankful. And you know, like I'm used to doing like parties by myself. So I'm yeah. just like, all right, we'll get to half of this tonight, half in the morning. And no, like I, I got to go to bed with a clean house. It was, yeah. it was, it was nice to have. So oh. yeah, love language. super thing. Yeah, I love it. Look, when you get into your 30s, people, you you don't care about what I mean. Yes, he buys nice things. That's fine. Yeah. But what really excites me is that he mopped my floors. Yeah. Okay. Acts That's of service. You going. Yes. I'm Ooh, I'm you took, I'm you took out my trash. Yeah. Oh, God, I love it. No, I saw him cleaning it then and, and doing all this stuff. But it's a little in, in things and in the in between. I completely agree with you. It's not. It, I'm not the grandiose gesture type. I like. It's a little everyday stuff that matters to me. Um, I'm here for the helicopter ride with the diamond ring ending. But would I rather you mop the yes. floor for 365 days? Probably something of both. Um, but I'm really here for the acts <laughs> of service so so much. Right. Um, Agreed. Don't sleep on the diamond uh, helicopter trip, though. Whoever's listening. Like, oh, no, that's, that's still, that's still come, on the books. Come correct. <laughs> um, mine for this year, especially, I said, number one um, was my mom. She's always been, like, the number one believer. Kind of like we alluded to earlier this year. It's like, I mean, it's so much of the work, and she's seen the journey. And I can only imagine yeah. what my family thinks that I'm doing or thinking, because I kind of just do my own thing and it makes sense in my world but i it's it's the minority compared to what the rest of the world how everyone else operates so i know it's not yeah. the most digestible situation um but my mom has always seemed to like get it like she never knows what i'm doing even though i know she knows but she just always kind of knows that i'm on path and she's just so supportive and saying like stay in it don't don't take this corporate opportunity you know you don't want to do even though the money's great or it looks easy she's like just seriously do like we've done enough of the things that you know weren't a fit that you could do, but like wait for the thing now that you really want to be doing and blah, blah, blah. So she has really been good because this has been a year of like, what do I actually want to do? Like, what are we doing? And not in a lost way. It's a more of like, let's be intentional at 42 and pick it out and not get around the stuff, that, <clears throat> the stuff that's just good enough. So she's just been so good about that. Um, and my second one is the Madonna of me, myself. I said, the older I get, the more I appreciate the younger determined self, even the super cringy moments. Kind of, we talked about earlier. Um, <clears throat> there's so much I did wrong as a young person, or it's just like dumb stuff where you're like, oh my God, like pre-therapy, yeah, whatever, always. cringe all over the board. <laughs> but my committed young athletic business, collegiate athlete self, and even just like my own training, like that was like a clear part of my soul. So kind of getting back into that. I think acknowledging things we did along the way. I don't know if you're good at this or not. You, you might be, but like, you know, coming through, you know, challenges or adversity or stuff when you're little and you don't have tools, like you look back and it's pretty miraculous 
to Ooh. be like, young self, yeah. you did a good job. Do you feel that? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I do. It. If, yeah. Once you get through the cringe. Yes. <laughs> there's, there's so many things where I'm like, oh, like, God, you, you said what you did, what like really or yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. Um, and like giving, giving yourself grace is like a skill. So yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I think so I'm ex- are you excited for 2023? Oh, I'm so excited. I, too. I don't have like any like anxiety. I just, I'm more of like, I'm interested to see how it goes. Yeah. Agree. <laughs> Agree. I, but. I agree. I have a little bit of an edge of like what's coming. Um, but I'm good. That's good for me. Uh, but I, I feel like I have no idea and we're into it. Uh, did you write down anything like specific you wanted? Mm. Even though I know you're, you're in the flow state right now. Yeah. I mean, I'm in like a real flow state right now. Like, and you know, I, I don't do my vision board until like, like the end of January. So okay. I usually kind of like those opinions I don't know and I know like I formed stuff last year but I'm just really in this mode of like let me see what is really like speaking to me before I write something down yeah because it'll probably change. okay <laughs> um did you do but, the I statements yeah, nothing... um I was gonna rapid fire those okay what do you have Let, well, I did the, I I wrote down just for my goal things I'm kind of like you I'm letting it go I did write down a mountain house 100k in savings ambassador course whole human approach course um so yeah. those are, they're not even like well built out but that's just what I like threw out on the page oh but those are yes yeah but let's do the let's do the I your statements and then did you do a mission statement did I do a mission statement <laughs> no <laughs> meditate I didn't do my homework y'all I'm sorry it's okay. <laughs> you're in, again, you're in a flow space. I actually think it's parts on brand. Of it, parts of it, I'm like, yes. And then parts of it, I'm like, I really want to like sit and think about this. Okay. So no mission statement yet, but I'm still, I still, yeah, you might have the word forward in there. Okay. I mean, maybe you needed this conversation like, to have the clarity. Today. You what? Yeah. The, I feel like we were kind of working through it right yeah. now. Thank you for this session still okay. changing my email do not, i was do gonna not, say uh, invoice is building we're running it we're running the tab <laughs> <laughs> um, all right how about i do my i statements and then because my, my mission statement actually like ten thousand foot view which, which i don't like because i actually think this is the year to be specific when it happens so like the clarity for me is like you want the hundred grand in the bank you want the hundred grand like you got to be specific there was a neon green yeah. it was not a lamborghini but that's what i want but car parked behind my mom and i went on our shopping trip like the odds of that ha- like there's certain things so like i'm like we're i love that i took a picture i'll send it to you it's actually really hilarious um literally parked right behind us like the table was sitting right there anyways i'll read mine and then my statement and you can read your eyes and if you have a statement that happens to come together you can put it out there but mine's pretty general um so i said i believe i can and i will i will achieve my purpose or really begin it i see myself as a leader I choose to be one word, a leader. I am worthy of abundance. I am a leader running theme here. Uh, mission statement was to fully step into the space that I have been building my whole life and drive it to the next level. This is the year of things to elevate opportunity is everywhere. And I'm right on time. It was actually kind of similar to last year, but hit us with your statement. I will say, I believe this is going to be so corny, but okay. I believe that I can, I believe that I can achieve because, you know, you do all that work and you're not sure. And yeah. then you do, you're like, oh shoot, well, what else am I about to do? So that's mm-hmm. what I mean by, I believe I can achieve. Um, I will achieve. I will achieve. I don't know what I need to think of. I, once again, that goes into like, what, what am I moving forward what am I pushing forward to so we'll tbd that okay um I see myself as inspirational which I would never usually say out loud I like that hear it listen to it hear it yourself yeah okay I would completely agree you're inspirational a thousand percent I clearly am biased but I would completely agree to someone that doesn't know you yeah but you know like there's certain words that like you want people to say about you not oh, necessarily yeah. say that you say about yourself yeah. <laughs> um but I think it's uh, but again as a leader like if you don't 
know it and own the brand, no one's ever going to believe it either. So I think that's like a very cliche yeah. distant business perspective, but I think it's, I think it's good. And I think you need to model. I'm glad you said it. I hope young women and yeah. men or anyone out there can be like, Oh yeah, I am inspirational. I am this like live in it. I think that's good. You just did that. So gold stars. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And lastly, I choose to be, I choose to be in peace. Mm -hmm. I feel like I finally achieved that. That was the main reason why I started therapy in 2020. And like, yes, I am that, but I choose to be that every day. Yeah. And that is, you? that takes practice and, and skill. It, that's so funny you said that. Cause when you were saying it was, um, uh, I, maybe it was, I will achieve or something. I was thinking peace for you. I was literally thinking that word because I think sometimes when you don't want for things or like, there's not a goal in front of you, I think you are in a good space yeah. of just being present. And that's enough. Like, I do think we, we always think we have to be like, what's the goal? What's the next thing? You can get to a doing? spot what are you doing? Yeah. yeah, where you're just good. There's intel in that. And like, I think you always need a little bit of a drive and a goal or something, but like also appreciate this peaceful space. It doesn't last forever, even if you're intentional, whatever, like enjoy yeah. the right now. I think that's deeply insightful. Um, And that, I was literally thinking peace. And you said that that was very weird, but I completely yeah. agree. I think that it's, and that's funny that you said that because I think the, the reason why my worksheet has been a little different this year, because I truly have achieved peace this yeah. year. Like I've never felt more peaceful. I, I don't feel on edge about anything or any people. And like, oh. I of course moved through that through the course of the year, but I can say like right now at the end of the year, I truly do feel peace and yeah. I'm here for that. Yeah. That's, like that's, that's nice. And yeah, I feel relaxed. And even last year, one thing I was meditating on was that that became my you know mission statement was you know like live in the moment mm -hmm. and you know just like take in all of the hard work that you've done and see what happens and I think that requires you to be in peace because you're not yeah. really like going after something amen I, I I mean I will completely second that you've earned it you've deserved it it's here and I think because you've achieved it these other good things have come in like not just like financial and good job but it's like a job people want to be like a partner that is a long-term yes. situation like some really like rooted I want to say like rooted fruitful rewards I don't know if that's the right word but yeah like long-term long-term fruitful stuff which yeah. I'm just like that's why I'm like whoa well, what else am I yeah. <laughs> what else are we what are we doing because I, I feel like I achieve like some I think that's one of the hardest things is finding like what you are excited to do every single day yes for years yes. on end and Absolutely. of course like that might change but I mean but at least I'm I'm happy today I'm not like the past at least five years I've always been taking positions that I knew that I would build towards something else not like oh I can sit back and relax here because I like yeah. it here no it's like no I'm here to do a job I'm here to do it well and then I'm gonna move on yeah so I finally feel like all right, I can, I can put up some furniture. I can get comfortable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's such a millennial mentality. I love it so much. Like yes. I mean, you, got, you got 10 minutes, you got two years it's with me. Two I'm, years. Out. Yeah. I'm out of here. What do you have, have for me? Bye. Our parents, our parents are like, I've been here for 40 years. I'm like, oh, hell no, that's definitely not going to work out. But, and you know. what's really funny. My mom was not like that at all. I actually learned okay. this from my mom. She's a boomer. So I believe she, this. She didn't play. Like, of course, she had jobs that she had for a long time. Like her last job, she was there for 16 years. But prior to then, especially when she was my age, she would take jobs for like two to three years and then go on about her day when yeah. it didn't serve her anymore. So I'm just glad that she taught me that that's okay. I love it. Zero surprises on my end. That was entirely on brand. Uh, and check out my podcast with her as well. I think it was like 161. Shout out to Mama Lucy. Yeah. Um, Dr. Dr. Lucy. Episode did Just you listen to this. it of course she crushed that it. was yeah. so good I was, I was so proud also my mom influencer. shout out to mama lucy she says that the tables have turned in like a fun way where she is ashley's mom oh <laughs> like that's I like this. Now. not like lucille Aww. johnson she's ashley's mom or mama I love lucy. It. <laughs> dr lucy dr lucy i was trying to lay it in there as much as possible i'm like we gotta like we gotta rep that everywhere all over the oh place. believe me she loves it 
I she love it so it. much. As she should, like go with it. Um, well, I appreciate your time and energy. I I think I want to get to your peaceful space by next year. I think I'm ready. I don't want to say that we're settling down. Yeah, no, I think I will. It's because I need oh. the the rambunctious, like like I just see like a tumbleweed going across like the desert prairie, like that's my world. Um, but I like I need that, <laughs> but just maybe like a little more flow in the peace. I think I'm ready for like I think my soul love chaos and now we're ready for peace. We'll see. But I love yeah, I, um, I really think that. that you're ramping up right yeah. now and yeah. then you'll get to that that peace, like flow chill state. But yeah, you have like really like some really cool stuff that you've been baking for yeah. years and now it's time to like Full on execute and then see the fruits of your labor in a green Lamborghini, which I can't wait to ride in. Yes. Oh, be there. <laughs> and we'll go pick up my $195 million Monroe painting. Um, once we'll see how that works. Great. Out. I'm going to pick up a very expensive bag. I'm gonna go get a Birkin. So <laughs> acceptable. I've already been telling everybody that will listen to me that I'm gonna have one in 10 years. So oh, for sure. I think sooner than that, but we'll all support that. But I'm gonna say probably <laughs> sooner. <laughs> we'll see um do you have any 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 closing words to wrap up our annual review preview uh podcast um I mean as usual I'm always so thankful that you do this with me every Mm. year and Mm. definitely want to like keep pushing people if you haven't done this yet please just start it and like you don't have to like shoot for the stars if you don't feel like it but if you do please do but the main thing is that you see that over time you progress and you progress more than you think you do. And yes. that's why I love doing this with you. So hopefully we it. can, you know, venerate that message to the masses and everybody gets on the same page and do your vision boards. That's oh, my man. last message. I got to, I got to do a new one. Um, I, yes, I echo. Thank you. I received I'm having a party. So oh. we'll get an invite. <laughs> well, let me know. No, no pressure. I got a I'm request in. to bring the vision board party back. Let's do it. I'm a hundred percent in plus champagne and or gin. Uh, I think that's what I did for my last uh, one, but I appreciate you. It's such a blessing in my life to have uh, my friends that are so varsity that get this stuff. that want to do this stuff with me. And we became friends quote unquote later in life. So it's a it continue. I never forget that. I never take it for granted. So I appreciate the blessings as they come. Um, it's hard to make friends when you get older, especially motivated varsity ones. Sure. So blessings and i i gotta meet her whole family that's the same so i got like a whole pack of varsity humans um through one human so that was a deal but i appreciate the energy you're familiar familiar (laughs) yeah i know for real uh i would say that with my family but you might not want all of them i love them but uh it may be (laughs) i mean i'm definitely taking mama d (laughs) okay she's mine for sure (laughs) we're we're just collectively a lot well singularly we're a lot but collectively it is like a tasmanian devil family so um pieces it's gold but it's it's the most uh so on that note please have a wonderful year people be safe on new year's eve uh i don't know if i'll have this out before then but be safe in general ashley i appreciate your time and energy where do we find you do you want to give your handles um you can find me on you know where i live twitter at the (laughs) ashley simone or on ig at the ashley simone boom go get at her um i appreciate you and we'll we'll see you for this next year yeah. Until next time. Thank you. Anytime. Bye. Thank you for joining Turmeric and Tequila with your host, Kristen Olson. Tune in next time and don't forget to subscribe on Apple, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen.